Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Shanga, and on behalf of the Education and Training Committee of CASA and Sri Lanka Freight Forwarders Association, I would like to warmly welcome our distinguished presenter for this morning, Mr. Hatim Kanani, ANCAD expert, Mr. Tilaka Pragnya Ratna, Senior Deputy Director of Customs and Head of ASEA Project Working Group. Mr. Deetma Jos, International Customs Expert and Consultant to the DGMT Project and other representatives from Sri Lanka Customs, GIZ, UNCTAD and other participants from shipping agents, freight forwarders and NVOCC agencies, CASA Executive Committee and SLAFA Executive Committee. Before we begin, I would like to give a quick brief on the housekeeping rules of this virtual session in order to avoid disruption to its flow. We kindly request all participants to have their video switched off and mic muted throughout the session. For this session only, the moderators and presenters will have their videos and mics switched on. Of course, questions and from the audience are most welcome. And if you have any questions, please type them out in the chat box so that our moderator can pick up these up and address them accordingly during the Q&A session. Welcome to today's session, focusing on an introduction to RC Hub. This webinar has been organized in collaboration with Ceylon Association of Shipping Agents and Sri Lanka Freight Forwarders Association with the assistance of Sri Lanka Customs. Throughout this session, we will explore the concept of RC Hub. RC Hub is a cutting edge platform developed by the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNCTAD. Now let me take the opportunity to, to <clears throat> introduce you to our presenter, Mr. Hatim Kanani. He's a seasoned software engineer with over two decades of experience in both the private sector and international organizations. With a background in software development and IT consultancy, he transitioned to the United Nations in 2008 as an Asikuda IT expert. Throughout his career, he has played a pivotal role in enhancing the Asikuda software, leading successful implementations in various countries such as Jordan, Kazakhstan, Rwanda, Uganda, and Cambodia. Currently based at the UNCTAD headquarters in Geneva, he serves as the technical lead for the ASEA product, demonstrating his dedication to developing innovative solutions for global challenges. Now let me introduce our other resource person for this morning, Mr. Tilaka Pragnya Ratnam. In 1993, he became a part of Sri Lanka Customs, subsequently becoming associated with the ICT Directorate in 1996. Mr. Tilaka Mr. has played a pivotal role as a project Hello. manager in numerous automation morning. projects, morning. including his service as the ICT Director for the uh, PNG Customs Automation Project. Uh, oh my he has a wealth of okay. experience in ICT as he sat on many eminent panels, sharing his knowledge and expertise. And our moderator for this morning will be Mr. Krishanth Kasa and Mr. Nishan Jawadana from SLAFA. Um, and our moderators for this morning, Mr. Krishanta Fernando representing CASA and Mr. Nishan Jawad representing SLAFA. Without taking much ado, I would like to invite Mr. Krishanta and Mr. Nishan to continue with the proceedings. Also, can I request everyone to switch off, switch off their videos and mics during the session? Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Krishanta. Yeah, thank you, Shanga. Uh, I think on behalf of uh, Kaza and uh, Slafa, we warmly welcome all of you again uh, for this very important uh, webinar. Uh, of course, uh, Mr. Nishan Jawadana from uh, Slafa is also uh, co-moderating and he will mainly join uh, uh, during the Q&A session uh, to moderate that. Uh, very briefly on, um, uh, on this project, uh, uh, we have had uh, Previously, multiple forums, uh, a few uh, public-private workshops, 
And what we have understood so far is that the project on uh, digitizing global maritime trade or DGMT is a cooperation between the Sri Lanka Customs, GIZ and uh, UNCTAD, as mentioned by Shanga. Uh, we have also understood that Sri Lanka and uh, Cambodia are pilot beneficiaries uh, of the DGMT uh, project. And uh, this project uh, is uh, formulated in line with the World Trade Organization's uh, trade facilitation agreement, mainly on uh, pre-arrival processing and risk management uh, measures, uh, meaning like you, you uh, process uh, advanced sea cargo uh, data before the arrival of such cargo, as well as reduce the time and cost of maritime trade for importers. So today's webinar becomes very important as we have now reached a stage where some of the testing needs to take place physically. And uh, today's uh, session will provide some hands-on insights uh, as to how uh, various entries into the RC Hub can be made. Uh, we will also understand some of the technology requirements and the process changes. Uh, so far, we have understood that the timings of uh, when the manifest data could be uh, submitted uh, is going to change from the current methods, uh, as well as uh, some of the changes uh, that can be made during the transit of such cargo. So we will we will learn more, um, as well as um, how possibly a vessel can be entered into RC Hub, uh, how to submit uh, this data, how amendments could be performed on the system. So all of these, I think uh, we are going to see, and from a SAFA perspective, how a shipment can be deconsolidated and much more. And uh, like I said, after the presentation, we will have Mr. Nishan Jawadana moderating the Q&A uh, as well. And which, without taking much time, uh, and uh, while thanking all of you once again, uh, let me uh, kindly invite Mr. Tilak uh, Pragyaratna, uh, Senior Deputy Director of Customs, uh, Head of the RC Hub Project Working Group, to make a, a brief intro into the RC Hub Project and the expected changes. Uh, over to you, Mr. Tilak. Thank you, Krishanta. Let me uh, let me share my screen uh, and my presentation to you all. Hope uh, everybody can hear me. Can hear me, sir. Yeah. Okay. Can you see my screen? Not as yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, it should be okay now. We can see the main screen, uh, Mr. Tilak, but uh, not the presentation slide still. Now it's okay. Yeah, thanks. It's okay. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So, Good morning. Today I am going to uh, present to you about this ASIHA project from Sri Lanka Customs uh, point, uh, side. Uh, this is uh, first of all I will let you know what is this project. Uh, we this we started this project with uh, uh, as GI uh, GIC uh, and UNCTAD uh, because uh, it is a requirement of uh, uh, TFA trade facility uh, trade. As per the uh, World World uh, Trade Organization, uh, it is a requirement. It's a uh, country. I mean, it is a uh, not a recommendation. We have agreed to implement pre-arrival processing. So we, for that, uh, GI said uh, uh, started the pilot project uh, for pre-arrival. So we got an opportunity and uh, opportunity to join this project. Uh, as a piloting country. So Cambodia and Sri Lanka uh, are the piloting countries for this, for this project. So this, this uh, platform is available only for, at the moment it is on, only available for Sri Lanka and Cambodia. So we are uh, very lucky to have, a, uh, fortunate to have this uh, system. Uh, uh, sorry. So I think uh, sorry. 
the screen switched again yeah uh, let me let me fix it yes Can you, can you see my screen, please? Uh, not the presentation still. Uh, I, I think okay. uh, your desktop is visible. OK. Is it OK now? Not as yet. Now it's OK. Yeah. OK. Uh, Krishanta, can you uh, make sure that the others also can see the screen? Because some people are explaining, uh, complaining me that they can't see the screen. Can we have uh, one or two confirming, please? Yeah. We can uh, see. We okay. can see. We can see the screen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 So maybe it's there are connections. Yeah. Okay. We also can see. Okay. Thank you so much. Go in presentation mode, Tilaka. Okay. Hmm? We can see. Wonderful. Very good. Okay, thank you. And, uh, okay, then. Okay. Uh, sorry for the disturbances. Like, uh, okay. Even we, uh, we can't see from outside. Really? Uh, but it, it, it's visible here in Germany, so it should come on other screens. It, it uh, don't be, change it, the settings here, Aka. Yeah. Keep the setting as well. Yeah. 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 I think, I think you can keep the settings as is. Mr. Tila. Okay. Let okay. them log okay. off and log in. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think, think you I might think. have to log off and log in again. Okay, okay thank you. And okay, uh, this uh, so this is how we started this project, right? So I think uh, uh, it is uh, we, we face several uh, challenges. So one of the biggest one is the COVID pandemic. So with the pandemic, uh, we had to uh, postpone uh, many events uh, related to this project anyway we managed to complete our project and we are we are uh, going to finalize the project uh, within this year i mean the uh, mid uh, by the end of uh, june so this is the uh, this is the project uh, actually uh, i have to uh, tell you uh, here we took uh, several decisions like uh, uh, with the with the implementation You are muted, sir. Uh, Mr. Tilak, you are muted. Sorry. Uh, yes. Okay. I think you are muted again, Mr. Tilak. Yes, sir. Is it okay now? Can you? Yes, yes, it's okay. okay. Yes, we can see. And uh, uh, with the implementation of this project, uh, uh, we, we face a lot of challenges like, uh, you know, everybody knows about that, uh, the uh, COVID pandemic uh, became a big challenge for this, uh, for mm -hmm. all of us. And then, uh, uh, then, uh, it is uh, uh, 
then the uh, uh, because of that uh, we had to postpone a lot of events uh, related to this project anyway uh, with this uh, implementation we took several decisions uh, very important decisions uh, those decision because of your uh, businesses we don't want to hinder your business because of this project so that is why we took uh, every uh, uh, when we take uh, any changes we we uh, we are very careful about this process because uh, uh, we know even uh, small changes will be a big uh, there's a big impact for your businesses so therefore uh, we we took uh, uh, each and every you know uh, uh, whatever the actions we take uh, we will uh, take care of your side as well uh, so therefore uh, we were we we are really uh, we, we are real concerns about your messages or information you are sending so because of that we we want to make sure that uh, the, the existing uh, data exchange uh, process uh, should be continued with the uh, asia uh, project so <coughs> things we started the project and uh, now the current status of the project is uh, we have completed uh, uh, several uh, major major events like uh, uh, pre arrival processing uh, processes and uh, uh, the target model and sop is completed so uh, that is a big, big challenge we we faced so we have completed the uh, design and completed the, all the processes uh, required for this project and uh, an asia uh, system is installed in sri lanka custom data center so all the hardware and software are installed uh, the system is ready actually and uh, uh, you know when asia hub will be a separate system and nasikuda world will be another uh, the old system so both systems need to be need to be work together uh, for this uh, uh, customs clearance process uh, so what would happen you are going to right now you are submitting the asikuda uh, the manifest information to asikuda system so in future you will submit all this information to asia system that is uh, what you are going to do from your side so no i mean all freight forwarders uh, shipping lines uh, and uh, all shipping agents they will uh, they will they will uh, uh, they will be moving i mean they will uh, moving from they will move from asikuda world system to asia up system and uh, you will be disconnected from asikuda world because you are not going to work with asikuda world uh, once asia up systems in uh, in full operation so this is uh, this is, is going to uh, happen soon and uh, then uh, uh, therefore asikuda world in uh, system is already in nas to allow uh, uh, to allow pre arrival customs so so sac received training on asia Uh, as good world in answer so uh, so already our officials are trained for the system so as uh, sri lanka custom side we are ready to start this pilot uh, project uh, the next step, next step will be uh, preparing uh, these shipping lines you know, i mean all the agents for this asia uh, uh, project so that is this is the initial uh, meeting uh, for that uh, so today is 22nd so from today onwards we are we are going to start this uh, project and pre arrival processing pre arrival processing is the uh, it is not the manifest uh, initially it is about the submitting the customs to the so sri lanka customs to clear the cargo before cargo arrives this is the this is the uh, our uh, goal so it will be started on may 24 so these are the next steps uh, ahead so expected changes for shipping agents and freight forwarders uh, so these are the things we are expected from your side the shipping agent shall report the vessel as soon as information is available so we, you need to report uh, the vessel registration information uh, uh, prior to uh, departure from the last port and the shipping agents uh, and uh, agents uh, freight forwarders Uh, should submit cargo declaration i mean the cargo and bill of lading these are the manifest information 
uh, to ASIHUB system uh, 24 hours prior to departure from the last foreign course. I know there are some challenges, but uh, this is uh, for time being, we have to uh, start with this, this condition, right? Uh, and the shipping agents and uh, you know, in VOCC agents and freight forwarding agents shall submit the cargo declaration and bill of trading for non containerized containerized cargo like bulk and break, bulk and liquid cargo uh, 72 hours prior to arrival or where wages less than 22 hours on departure from foreign port. These are the things we are expected from your side. So anyway, uh, we have to uh, we have to understand uh, with this uh, implementation we are allowing you to do the modification as you need like until the vessel arrives you can do uh, any changes to any changes right uh, to your uh, submitted data so there are no penalties or nothing from your side you can do the modification so uh, we will our uh, uh, my next presenter uh, mr hutton kankani will uh, will uh, Oh, yeah, this man Kankani uh, will explain uh, what are the uh, how to do and what, what you need to do. And uh, uh, yeah, so my next person uh, uh, now, uh, Mr. Ditma is going to uh, explain uh, about this project. So, uh, Ditma, uh, it is over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Silaka, and uh, thank you, the organizers, for um, for arranging this uh, se seminar um, and for um, making sure that uh, so many people actually can participate. Uh, currently, we have 632 uh, participants. That is certainly a tremendous uh, turnout. Um, my name is Dietmar Jost. Uh, I am the International Customs Advisor to this project um, and for the last uh, three years have helped uh, Sri Lanka Customs as well as our UNCLAD colleagues um, uh, to develop our pre-arrival processing target model. Um, and in, in some aspects, uh, uh, Sri Lanka has already um, outlined the basic uh, 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 concept of, of this um, basically, the underlying uh, 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 motivation for our project is to um, implement international agreements and commitments that Sri Lanka government has made in the past, be it the, the trade facilitation agreement on the one hand, or being uh, the safe framework of standards of the World Customs Organization. Um, both Both instruments are... Uh, very important and critical and deal with the electronic submission of information prior to the arrival of cargo, um, uh, which includes manifest and supporting documents, but most importantly, um, deals with the uh, uh, customs declaration, the CUSDEX, as, as you know them from, from the terminology. Um, you have been already experiencing the submission of manifest data prior to arrival for many years now successfully. So um, the transition from your current system to the new system um, will not be as uh, as, as difficult um, uh, except for the new timelines um, that that we have uh, that we have in, uh, built into to the system to comply with. Uh, this international uh, standard and best practice uh, put into the safe framework of standards of the World Customs Organization, meaning that for containerized cargo, um, customs will be uh, looking to receive the data 24 hours prior to departure from the last foreign port. We heard already um, uh, from, from comments uh, from, from various uh, uh, stakeholders and associations um, uh, that you see this as uh, as a significant challenge, um, and clearly um, there will be some transition and change necessary in the beginning. Um, but this process has been implemented already in many pl places around the world, um, and uh, Sri Lanka, being the 23rd biggest port in the world and growing, um, uh, is a global player 
in this. And I think it will be important to maintain the competitiveness of uh, Sri Lanka port um, that we are applying and implementing uh, these best practices. Um, so clearly your customers overseas will also have to play along uh, for which communication by Sri Lanka Customs has already been issued, um, indicating that by then and then we are introducing new timelines and new submission rules um, so that you communicate with your overseas partners uh, to submit submit information to you here in Sri Lanka um, earlier uh, than you, you have received them uh, before. So on your side, it will require some changes. But the changes that uh, <clears throat> are being brought to you will also develop significant benefits, uh, 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 medium to long term. Um, because uh, as the information making available to customs earlier, 24 hours prior to departure, also means that you have that information earlier. So the visibility into the supply chain on, on your side uh, uh, is, becomes much, much higher and better. So you will be able to plan your logistics uh, um, from the hinterland perspective, uh, uh, much better, much earlier, and much more precise uh, with more accurate data. Um, and at the same time, and here comes the uh, critical point for um, uh, uh, this project, um, uh, the, the site that we are not going to show today, uh, but which will be critically important, is to allow also the importer, the owner, and the custom broker uh, to submit customs declarations prior to arrival. Um, and for this end-to-end -end improvement that we want to bring in, um, improve the release time of cargo. Uh, so not only that you receive information earlier into your supply chain, allowing you to uh, uh, engage uh, with logistics uh, processes earlier, um, you can also rely on the fact that the cargo, once it has arrived, will be released quicker than, than, than today, uh, which already I have to admit, you know, in many cases, it's already pretty fast. Um, so if you like a custom, certainly does already a very wonderful job. Um, but there's always a, a better uh, that can be that can be done. So uh, we, we believe strongly that uh, with the introduction of this project uh, here, uh, which starts basically this week with the registration of, of you in, in the new system, and then uh, making you uh, uh, um, able to to send test information, etc. Um, that this will be a win-win for everybody, for you, for customs, but also for your customers who are receiving the cargo uh, into their factories, uh, uh, into their businesses uh, uh, to do uh, to do work in in in, in the country. Huh? So, so, so this is the underlying uh, 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 promise uh, that uh, we have with this uh, with this project. Um, and uh, uh, our colleague Hatem will uh, uh, show you all the, the necessary details of the system. Um, and as uh, Tilaka has pointed out, uh, we will have a, a piloting phase uh, during which everybody will be able to, to learn and to get trained on, on the system uh, before at some point in, in the future um, uh, we will switch it on live then for uh, uh, for everybody and uh, turn off uh, the old mechanism and the old system. Um, and uh, with, with this and no further further ado, I just wanted to point out and give this to Tilaka. I digged out a Sri Lanka customs tie from my uh, nice selection of customs ties, which I collected over the last 35 years in my business. So uh, just uh, in, in respect and uh, recognition, uh, of, of Sri Lanka customs uh, and the work that we've done over the last three years. I wish you all best of success and luck uh, with, with your project. Um, and and uh, I'm very, very convinced that this will be a good one. So with this, I am happy to turn over back to Tilaka or to Hatem, whoever is next uh, in, in line. Thank you very much and uh, a very good morning from Germany. Thank you, Dietmar. Yes. Uh, so let me start uh, again uh, with the, the next steps about this piloting. Uh, so uh, we are expecting as Sri Lanka customs uh, uh, custom to start the pilot uh, project 
uh, from tomorrow from from to tomorrow onwards so uh, the, with this uh, uh, we are going to uh, going to do this uh, in in, that, uh, in two phases uh, the first phase is about uh, submitting uh, manifest and bls uh, especially and uh, on pre arrival uh, our arrival date exchange so the second step will be uh, import formalities it is about uh, caustic uh, submission pre arrival caustic submission it is not it is done by uh, our uh, customs clearing agents so that is the clearing process that will be the next step <coughs> So yeah. for that, hello. Okay. So next step will be uh, with this. Uh, uh, so we have divided into two phases. Uh, as per the first phase, uh, the uh, 22 March. Uh, so today the webinar uh, we, we 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 are conducting the webinar. So <coughs> after that uh, we are going to start the test submissions, a CF test environment. Uh, so there's a, a WhatsApp group. Uh, all all of you can join that WhatsApp group. And during the submissions, you have uh, this uh, uh, manifest information to us here. If you face any issue, that you can post it into the WhatsApp group. And uh, all that uh, technical uh, staff is connected, and custom staff is connected. So you will be able, you will get a, a immediate response, and uh, we are we will fix the issues immediately. So that is what we are going to do with this test submission, and uh, but still you, you need to you need to submit uh, Asikuda uh, 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 your your data to Asikuda World as you do now, right? So keep on uh, submitting uh, all the information what you do now to Asikuda World. This is the test. Uh, th this is about Asia test uh, platform. So you have to keep. You have to submit both. Uh, both uh, you have to maintain the both system at the same time. So first of April, we are going to start the parallel submission. So parallel submission means so you, whatever you submit will be considered that <coughs> as a live data. But you have to maintain the both system uh, parallelly. Like while you are submitting the Asikuda World uh, uh, data uh, to Asikuda World system. At the same time, you, you have to submit uh, the data to ASEAP system. This is what we are we are expecting from your side. So uh, during this uh, pilot uh, uh, parallel submission, we are trying to fix all the issues. And uh, first of May will be the end of all process. So from one, first of May, you can stop ASICUDA World uh, data su trans uh, submission, and you can you can continue uh, ASEAP data. Uh, submission with ASEAP system. This is what we are trying to do uh, in our piloting uh, first phase. Then, uh, uh, <coughs> then uh, phase two. Phase two will be the uh, will be not for you basically it's for the shipping. I mean the the customs clearing agents mainly. So phase two we are going to start uh, pre arrival custom declarations. So so shipping lines and freight forwarders are continuing their uh, operations as uh, with the uh, system because they are they are they are uh, they are not going to submit the data to asikuda world system so from 1st of may uh, we will we will uh, select five companies uh, for the piloting for customs uh, declarations i mean pre arrival custom declarations so we, we will provide training for the pilot piloting business and then we need to sign an MOU with the, them uh, for because uh, for this pilot PAP because the legal changes has uh, is, is still in uh, it's not done yet we are going to do uh, soon so with that uh, so because of that we we need a, a MOU to uh, with with these five companies so. With that, we are going to start the pilot uh, pre-arrival processing on 1st of May. So this ex this uh, project, uh, this uh, phase will be extended to more companies once the legal <coughs> changes are done. Right. So this is the phase two. Uh, with this, I think uh, you may have a lot of questions, but uh, you can ask these questions uh, during our 
Q and Q&A session. Uh, so with that, uh, uh, then uh, in April 17th, we have planned to do the training for uh, Sri Lanka custom officials for pre-arrival decorations. And there will be another webinar for piloting uh, pilot companies for this pre-arrival uh, pre-arrival custom decoration. So on on 18th uh, April. Mr. Tilaka, you are muted, I think. From what point I, I you you didn't I mean you got uh, I got muted. Can yeah, you from here, from here. From here, okay. Uh, so. Uh, so I think from the webinar day. point, from the webinar point forward, Mr. 18th April onwards, if you can just repeat, if you don't know. Okay, uh, so on 17th April, uh, the training will be conducted uh, for the custom for official uh, on pre-arrival decoration. And uh, on 18th uh, April, a webinar will be conducted for piloting companies for this uh, pre-arrival custom submissions. Uh, anyway, 1st of May, we are going to start the piloting on pre-arrival processing. This is the schedule. Uh, we hope as Sri Lanka customs to, uh, 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 I mean, uh, to, 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 uh, to uh, align with this schedule. So I, I think uh, with this uh, one, there is no challenges. Uh, so far we can, uh, we, 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 don't, we can see. So I think uh, we will be able to, uh, start our PAP on 1st of May. This is the uh, main goal of this project. So with that, I'm going to hand over the uh, uh, my this presentation to Mr. Hatem Kan Kanani. So thank you. Thank you, Tilaka. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so I said, uh, Mr. Tilaka and uh, my colleague Dietmar, I will show you, uh, <laughs> present you the ASIHAB system and starting by explaining the process to register to the ASIHAB system in order to get uh, a valid user account and to be able to connect to ASIHAB and then to submit uh, information. Um, let me share my screen. Please confirm that you can see my screen. Uh, yes, Mr. Hatem, we can see your screen. Thank you, Shanga. Um, so first of all, um, before I um, uh, connect to the ASIHAB system and show you the, the features, I would like to start with the explanation how you as a companies and users can connect to the system and the first uh, step towards that is the what we call a self user registration into asia and for the process of registering and approval of user uh, of your uh, user account in asia uh, we have created uh, first of all a guideline here that will be distributed uh, among um, all of you explaining those steps that you need to uh, do okay so this is the um, the guideline, okay? And this guideline is what we call self-user registration guideline. So it explains all the steps. Let me explain you, uh, show you the document. 
quickly and then we can uh, uh, use try to do the same thing into the Azihab system. OK, so this one, uh, this uh, guideline is meant for is intended to uh, carriers, shipping agent, freight forwarders and VOCC. OK, um, I would please kindly keep your mics um, mute um, so that we don't need to mute everyone and then I get muted uh, during the presentation. So um, here this document explain actually um, where where you need to go. So the first thing is you have the URL here to access uh, the Azihab Live uh, system. OK which landing uh, showing what is the landing page and uh, um, where you have uh, two actually two main uh, uh, links the first one is to sign in for already registered users and this link which is for uh, completely new users which uh, uh, will um, uh, request registration so for that one the user registration in azihab following this link you need to uh, fill in this form, okay? And it is very important when you are in, into this form that you select uh, the first thing that you select what, what type of uh, company you are working for. Is it the carrier, shipping agent, freight forwarder, or NVUCC, okay? Here in this document, we have described the different fields, okay, that you need to fill in in order to uh, that uh, the, your uh, request of registration is accepted by the system, okay? And um, I'll show you that into the system, uh, what is needed, especially this uh, carrier code that identifies the company that you are working for, okay? So let me sh explain you in global the, this, uh, this process. So first, after you are able to get uh, um, confirmation from the system that your request has been taken into account after filling all the information, necessary information. The next step will we will be to go to Asikuda Word and to send an email to customs uh, um, requesting using your credential in Asikuda Word, uh, requesting that customs to validate and to approve your um, user account into into Azihab that you submitted into Azihab. Okay, so I will I will explain all this uh, all this uh, what what kind of email you will have to send using Asikuda Word. Just I would like to switch to the now to the system itself here and I will do the uh, registration in front of you so you get uh, a feeling and how it looks like and what is needed when you uh, when you try to register okay so as I explained to you this is the um, the uh, URL of the system as you have dot customs dot gov dot LK okay this is uh, the life the Sri Lanka as you have live server, it is, as I said, Mr. Tilaka, it is installed and deployed at uh, the Sri Lanka Customs uh, Data Center or premises. OK, so. As I mentioned, we need to click. Uh, please keep your please keep your mics uh, switch off. Please. Thank you. So user registration, if I click here on user registration, so I will get into this uh, form, OK? This form enables you, gives you the possibility to um, uh, provide all the information about you and your company in order to be approved by customs, um, etc. So here we say that we have uh, four different uh, profiles, OK, carrier, freight forwarders and VUCC shipping agent. So you need to select which one is the uh, the proper type of company that you are representing. OK, so let me try. Let me do it with the carrier OK, to show you. So let's do an example. I'm uh, let's say I'm working for this uh, for this uh, company. OK. Let's put my first name, last name. Here we put 
let me put uh, birthday, nationality, let's say Sri Lanka, okay, gender, male. Then I need to put my identity, national ID, okay, my nationality uh, again, Sri Lanka, ID number, let's put uh, any ID number here, an example, okay. Then I need to choose a, a username here, okay. So for usernames, let me choose carrier.5, okay. So for usernames, we have uh, some uh, actually, uh, let's say, uh, 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 pattern or way of encoding uh, login identifier. So it must be using only um, small letters, no capital letters, and it can contain only uh, letters and digits, okay? The dot is allowed to, um, you know, separate between blocks like first name, last name, etc. So this one, for example, hatem.carrier.5, I can, I can, I can put hatem simply, I can put Hatem uh, last name, um, uh, first name, last name, etc. So it's uh, those are possible to accept, be accepted by the system. If you do like this, for example, it will not be. If you put the H capital, it would not be accepted. So um, we want to use a simple way of creating login identifier. I'll keep it to show you what error you get from the system. And here. I need to input my, um, let's say, my email address here. I can put um, the, the phone number and choose a password. So for the password, it is important. I'll, I'll make it uh, visible here. For example, I will uh, let me uh, put something like this. OK, so this is carrier. At one, two, three, so you understand that this password and the password confirmation must be the same in order to be accepted by the system but also they are a, they, there is a password policy that is defined by uh, customs through the system and this password policy um, should be uh, valid okay when you uh, select your uh, pa uh, password so for example it must contain at least one small um, uh, um, uh, letter, one capital letter, one special character, uh, one digit, and it should be between eight character and 32 character. This is the password policy. It may change in the future. Customs may ask the minimum the password to be 10, for example. OK, but for the moment, this is the policy that is um, uh, accepted by the system. So if I put something like this, uh, for example, I've put something like this would not work because already the password confirmation field does not match, but also there is no capital letter here. It would not be um, accepted. OK, so anyway, if even if you do it like this, the system will uh, provide you with uh, an error message. We'll try that uh, together. OK, um, and then we have this field here, carriers or carrier code, okay. So remember I, I, I was selecting um, as user type, I was saying that I am a carrier. And in this case here, you have to submit, I have to give here a carrier code, okay. This carrier code comes from um, your carrier code in Asikuda World, okay. And it's, um, you will see, I will show you the example of freight for water, shipping agents, and NVUCC. Can you mute yourself, please? Thank you. So um, for the carrier code here, it is coming from your carrier code that was defined in Asikuda Word. So in your profile in Asikuda Word, there's a property carrier code. Uh, if you already have access to Asikuda Word and so on, it is exactly the same, that same carrier code, okay? I can show you here uh, quickly. Um, uh, uh, let me find that Excel file. It is here. Uh, those are the carrier codes that are being used, okay? These are the carrier codes defined by customs to the um, shipping, let's say, um, they define the code for all uh, shipping stakeholders. Okay, so 
in this case, I have, uh, uh, I think I have created one carrier code here for test uh, HKN. OK, let's see if it is accepted by the system. Of course, if I put anything here, uh, the system will not allow me to submit. So let me try with this one. I'm going to submit this and see. So I will get a list of errors. OK, a list uh, there is a validation verifications um, errors. OK, and those errors I need to fix them. So whenever you get this red uh, card here, no panic. Just read the error and um try to fix it uh, um, as the system is helping you you know in order to achieve your registration okay so here i have got invalid carrier code which is uh, which is normal this code does not exist so let's put hkn this is test code that i i have used let's try again submit and then uh, so the carrier code is fine now I, I get rid of that error, but I have another one regarding the login identifier is saying that invalid username, hatem.carrier5, it should contain only small letters or digits. It has to start with a letter and so on. Okay, so this is what I explained to you about having the, the conditions uh, requirement for, uh, for a username in ASIAB. Okay, so in this case, it's because this one is capital letter. Let me put it uh, like this. And then actually I try again, submit again, okay? Submitting again, it's fine, you know, for the, as you can see, for the username, it's okay. But for the password, there is a problem. So remember that for the password, I was uh, on purpose taking uh, the capital uh, letter. Okay, so for that, we need, I need to put back this capital letter. And as you can see, uh, you have here what are the requirements for the password. So the length uh, should be between 8 and 30. The minimum lowercase, minimum uppercase is at least one character, minimum digits, minimum special character one. So here I have one capital letter, small letters, the special, uh, let's say, uh, character and digits. So let's try again and let's submit. So in this case, as you can see, uh, the red was gone, and now it is uh, it is actually uh, it is actually uh, we had this uh, uh, green uh, or this message saying that the registration process has been completed successfully. You will receive it is now pending approval, so it doesn't mean that after doing this you will get access to the ASIHAB system. It is now pending approval uh, from customs and you will get an email once approved or rejected. OK, uh, but you will not be able to log in until approval. So if you try, if I try now to log in to the system using this, I will not be uh, it will not be possible. Remember, I created carrier five. OK, and here I put carrier at one, two, three, but I cannot connect to the system yet because it needs to be approved by uh, customs in order to proceed. OK, so um, uh, at the same time, we have this uh, email here that was sent automatically uh, from the system. It was sent to me. I was putting my email, so it is important that you put your uh, write email because this will be the communication. You will get notifications from the system using your email. So here I got another hub notification that my account hatem.carrier5 is under review. So at the same time, you got the message from the system, but you also get um, a notification that hatem.carrier5 is under review. You will be notified once it is approved. Okay. Um, so from the registration uh, perspective, this is OK in ASIHAB. So the continuity of this now into, into ASICUDA World. So the next step that you need to do in order to get the access to ASIHAB. So we actually, as ASICUDA World is implemented in, uh, in Sri Lanka, and you already have the access. And in order to accelerate the process of access and the validation of your 
Access, we actually are using our existing uh, solution, as you could have word, in order to facilitate that uh, uh, and uh, accelerate this process of registration. OK, so for that reason, when you connect to uh, to Asikuda Word, so let me here um, show you. So when you connect to the Asikuda Word system using your credential, existing credential Asikuda Word, you can use actually, um, or you have to use the mailbox, okay, of Asikuda Word. Remember, it is uh, using this uh, icon here, okay, and then you need to, uh, after it opens the mailbox. OK, you need to click on this button to create a new mail. So this is the Asikuda Word internal email. So when you click here, you will get uh, this uh, new email uh, dialog. And from here, uh, your username will appear as the from. OK, and you need to send actually um, an email to this group as you have group. OK. And for that, just typing uh, AS, start typing, and it will appear here uh, uh, from the from a list. It will appear here, and you just need to select uh, as you have in 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 as a recipient of or or destination of your email. Okay, then down. So there is a, a group of administrator allocated or assigned by customs who are actually. Uh, will receive your request and your request should be formulated in in this way of course to facilitate uh, the work of the approvers uh, approvals uh, etc and accelerate your access to uh, as you have so we have here the subject as you have user registration let me make it um, bigger here so you can see so here we have the as you have user registration for your company here i just using um i i just used an example uh Hatem shipping ltd so as you have user registration for the name of your company and then in the body or the message of the email you can put uh, dear sir madam uh, etc all this text is uh, is is above uh, in in the same in this guideline uh, I have put uh, this uh, text, so it just copy paste, but you replace uh, with uh, all the fields here, all the names here with your proper naming, etc. of course. So please review the following user registration as you have. You put your company name, your, your name here, company code. Remember this, I showed you in Excel, the same that you have been putting while you were registering. Your login identifier that you used in, in uh, in Azihab, in my case, I was putting Hatton.carrier5. Okay, so I will put here Hatton.carrier5 if I have to do it. My email address, the same that you used in uh, in uh, in Azihab while registering, and your mobile number. Okay, and then just send this email. You need to send this email, and after sending this email, there is a group of administrator who will check actually your request and as soon as it is approved by the system then you will uh, receive uh, you will receive here an email such as uh, like this for example uh, if i look to the emails like this for example this is one email um, i received uh, before i was testing so had to forward the three mm -hmm. for example here was approved and you will see this as soon as you see this email then you can go back to your uh, then you can go to uh, as you have system put your email um, address uh, put sorry your username and your password that you selected and you will be able to access uh, the system okay so uh, let me do it uh, quickly for uh, this user here let me connect us admin user this is the request let me just review okay and then i uh, select all and i will uh, you know this is the administrator of the system is doing this so let me put this here okay and then i will actually accept your I accept this one. 
So it has been accepted. It will just uh, disappear from this list here as as um, a user. So here I can now uh, sign out from the system and I can sign in. So that user, that user I have just created, I have just approved it through um, by administrator. One, two, three. And then if I sign in now, I am able to uh, connect to the system. OK, after uh, being uh, after my a username has been approved, uh, etc. And then I can, as a carrier, see that I can actually uh, enter to the system and um, have information about the um, the uh, live server. Okay, so let me um, sign out from here. Okay, and let us let me show you. Uh, so this was for the carrier. I showed you the complete process for uh, carriers. So let me um, show you again um, other other profiles, OK, so for you to understand. So for other profiles, such as, for example, freight forwarder is exactly the same. OK, it's exactly the same here. Just select freight forwarder. You have to fill in all the information that I did also for carrier, but here you have uh, it's not a carrier code. It's a tr we call trader code in 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 Azihab, and then we you can put FF two hundred. I guess uh, codes has been uh, assigned in this format um, by Sri Lanka Customs. Okay, uh, as you can see in in this uh, in the Excel file that I have uh, shown you here. Okay, from the list of uh, codes in Ashikuda word and that we are using also in 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 Asia. OK, so you have to put FF uh, 200 in the case you are uh, 200, uh, 154 or whatever. OK, so this is in case of rate for water. The whole uh, the rest is is the same. If you select NVUCC and VUCC is also same like uh, like freight for water, you have also to put uh, trader code. <clears throat> Sorry, then for shipping agent, it's slightly different. So shipping agents, you need to put an agent code here, but also you can put, for example, I think, uh, let's say a A01 as an example, and you can here put all the carriers for which you are working. OK, the codes that uh, these shipping agents are working, it can be multiple. Uh, carriers, so a shipping agent may work for multiple carriers and he can work for MERS, for Costco, etc. OK, you can delete here this one. You can add another one uh, and so on and so forth. OK, that's the difference between a shipping agent and um, and freight forwarders. So um, this is how uh, it is filled in. The system will check if this agent code exists. Of course, if all carrier codes exist, and the same way, all the all the rest is exactly the same. And this is what is currently described into this into exactly into this document. Okay, so this document explain you after you succeed to register when you enter into the system. So basically, based on your uh, access rights, whether you are a carrier or freight for water or shipping agent or NVUCC, you will see you have um, um, some different access like carrier can see uh, create new declaration while freight for water could not do that. OK, so this is the document uh, how it is explaining all uh, all kind of uh, 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 what is in the system. OK. I think with this, um, I went uh, in detail through the um, registration uh, process. OK, and then I can uh, move on to the uh, to the presentation of the system itself. OK, um, and for that, I'm going to use the test server. So I don't need any more of this document. OK, and let me uh, just uh, let's uh, close this one and connect now to the test server. OK, right? So 
now I'm going to show you uh, the other part. I will uh, now enter into the features of uh, of uh, the ASIHAB system, and I will highlight the changes uh, with uh, the main changes or uh, that uh, uh, between um, between ASIHAB, this new solution, and what we uh, we are used to do in uh, using ASICUDA word system. Okay, so. Um, let's start. Okay, let's start by the first thing is to create, is to connect, let me connect as a carrier into the system. I already created several users and with different profiles um, into these test servers. So this is, I'm connected to the test server, it's not the live server, so your registration must be done to the live server. Okay, we are one week from uh, first of um, one week from the starting of 1st uh, April. So um, you are actually, as Mr. Tilaka uh, explained, you are uh, kindly requested to register to the live server. OK, and you will have before 1st April, you will have the time to accommodate and to do some uh, testing and so on before the launch on, on 1st uh, April. So on the test server, so the difference between the test server and the uh, the live server is that the uh, the URL is different. So let me go back here. So the test server, while the live server was azihab.customs.gov.lk, the test server is azihab-test.customs.gov.lk. Okay. So. Uh, and you have this indication here, Sri Lanka test server, and here you have Sri Lanka live server. So every time, if you are confused between the two servers, you need to check this this um, uh, label here to be sure that you, whether you are on the live server or you are on the test server, in case you get also access to the test server and uh, and so on in the future. Okay. Um, so let me go to the test server and let us connect now as a carrier. OK, so I'm connecting here as a carrier. Let me check the chat if there are questions. Uh, we have a Q&A. We have a Q&A session after where we can answer all your questions. Um, OK, so please be patient. Um, please be patient and we will do that after. OK. I see that uh, uh, I see that some of you has already tried to connect. Do not do it right now. We are on purpose. We did not activate all codes on Aziha yet. OK, so we will tell you when exactly you will be able to uh, register. OK, in order not to have, um, a, you know, all of you going without the proper documentation and, and everything. OK, so um, here. Use the link to join. OK, so Isham is explaining uh, what is going on with the WhatsApp. Group. OK, so here I am uh, connected to the Sri Lanka test server. OK, we are uh, Sri Lanka test server. I can check my profile here. So Hatton Carrier, my profile, if I click here, I can see that I am, my profile is here and I am working as a carrier for this carrier company, okay? It's, um, it's not a real carrier company, but I'm using it uh, for testing purpose, Ashka and you, okay? This code, right? So let me go back to the landing page or dashboard. So here, when you enter the Azihab system, you will find this actually uh, this uh, panel here showing all incoming cargo declaration. OK, so actually. Uh, this is only general information about cargo declaration. OK, only general information, time of arrival, carrier code, transport means the voyage number, departure port, destination port and departure date. OK, so apart from this general and everyone can see the same. So this is we were for facilitation. So everyone can see that there is a vessel 
coming that date to Sri Lanka with the voyage number, etc. So only those, uh, let's say, uh, seven data elements are visible to everyone, whether you are a carrier or freight forwarder, you know that there are which vessels using what cargo declaration are coming to the country. OK, so these help you to see ah, the cargo declaration is here. My my uh, the consignment that I want to uh, I want to um, uh, the consignment. If this consignment is um, is uh, belongs to this cargo declaration, so I have the exact uh, voyage information. So this is like voyage information, okay, which is um, uh, accessible uh, and visible. You know, whenever you enter to connected users into the system, okay. Apart from that, data is actually the, the content of those cargo declaration is confidential and only visible to the carrier to the respective carrier okay so uh, as a, as a carrier i have this menu let's look here we have um, this menu into the system so we have uh, maritime cargo i can see here and the maritime cargo i can see here um, uh, the menu where I can create new cargo declarations. I can see the list of cargo declarations, create new consignment, see the list of consignments, create containers, etc. We have here the fast cargo integration for uploading XML files. This one is for uploading Excel files. And here we have the list of catalogs, okay, or reference data, which is visible and my um, my profile also, uh, etc. How to change password and how my manage my account. Okay, so um, the system has this feature of door turning uh, light or dark mode. You can change the language. We can change the language from English to French, etc. Spanish. We are. Um, it's the system is uh, internationalized. It. So it can be actually uh, it it handles like as it could have word multiple language. Here I can see my profile, and so on. This is to to move to home page back and and so on. I can also make uh, make uh, maximized, and then escape. I come back to the normal view. Okay. So here let's have a look on the cargo declarations. So we have here cargo declarations, and as you can see from uh, as you can see from the uh, from this uh, uh, cargo declaration i can so see only mine okay i can see only my cargo declaration and not and not others right uh, i can click on one uh, cargo declaration here let me select uh, uh, any one of those like this one and then i can see that i have here so uh, we have the cargo declaration here we have the voyage uh, office. This is the movement reference number. So this is um, a unique, uh, a, a unique key that is provided. Reference number that is provided by the system using a serial number. Okay. As soon as you submit a cargo declaration, you will get this unique movement uh, reference number. Uh, the the flow it is uh, in port from uh, Malaysia to uh, Colombo. This is the last uh, port of call, the voyage number, departure date, date and times, okay. The carrier, the shipping agent in case, we have here the transport means information. We have the totals and ha here we have all the consignments inside this, uh, this cargo declaration. So we have here the, uh, the top level or uh, the master a master consignment okay of for this uh, cargo declaration so if i click on one of them it opens for me the consignment and i can see the information about the consignment the transport document uh, reference uh, etc the journey details where it started where it was received place where it was loaded etc we have the parties the consignor information notify party consignee and then we have here all the let's say the consignment items okay and the difference now between uh, and this is one of the difference that i want to highlight between the um, between azihab and 
uh, and uh, as you could award, is that we can have multiple consignment items, not only one description of goods, but we can have multiple description of goods, okay? Not only one. And if you look to the, uh, if you look to the, um, to these, um, to these, to every consignment, consignment items. So here I have uh, five consignment items, okay, with uh, different descriptions. In my case here, there are cars, okay. So, okay, and. Uh, Please again, uh, kindly uh, make yourself mute. OK, so here um, I have here five consignment items. OK, so if I click here, I can see the um, uh, the details of each item. Gross weight, number of packages, uh, ashes code. It's not a mandatory information, but the system can accept uh, ashes codes. OK. Commodity code in case commodity code is the is more like the national tariff code, let's say. Okay, is optional. And dangerous goods, which is a new field. Uh, it is using the UNDG reference tables of four digits. Okay. If in case we are uh, pointing that these are dangerous goods. Okay. Then the description and then the shipping mass. So the description can be up to 4,000 uh, character. Shipping mass also can be up to 4,000 character. And in addition to that, in addition to this, uh, to this, um, you know, uh, consignment item. In ASIHAB, we need to define for each consignment item, okay, how it is stuffed into containers. If there are containers, how these, how those um, goods are stuffed into the container, it can be stuffed into one or multiple containers, and for that it should be defined for each consignment item. What is the equipment number or container number? What is the stuffed gross volume? How much volume it is it is uh, taken from uh, for these uh, for those goods? Okay, CBM. And then we have the stuffed gross weight and we have the stuffed packages. OK, there is a constraint in the system that the total stuffed packages to be uh, the same like the item. So if we have here uh, multiple, uh, let's say multiple containers, the total of the stuffed packages and weight for that for those containers must be actually equal to the what was declared for the gross weight of this item and the number of packages of this item okay in uh, in in asicuda word we have only one in asicuda word if we are the equivalent in asicuda word will be to have only one item okay not multiple because uh, only one uh, description and i noticed that this stuffed gross weight um, was not mandatory in uh, in uh, in uh, in Sri Lanka. I noticed in some XMLs that this uh, uh, this stuffed gross weight was not mandatory. Okay, so for the moment it's okay. It's very important to mention today that your XMLs, existing XMLs, because we ensure that there will be a backward compatibility. So your XMLs will be accepted and integrated by the system as they are. If there is any, if you, for example, next week you um, encounter that there is, please encounter any, for example, uh, any XML that was not accepted. It was accepted before by as a good word, but not accepted now. We can actually uh, please contact using this WhatsApp group or, or whatever, and we can uh, adjust, but we tested several XML files from before and they are working. But progressively, we would like to move to this new structure uh, progressively in the future so that uh, uh, we can benefit. Uh, so this is will be in a staged mode, in, in, stay, in a staged way until uh, everyone 
gets used with the system and so on and we can uh, move on with the new uh, with the, this new structure and so on because the xml we accept your um, we accept the previous xml but we did also improvement in that xml to accept this new format of um, of a new structure of the consignment and and so on and cargo declaration and so on okay so here we have also so those are the items you can see the other items here and so on. And here we have the containers. So if we click, so the difference between, uh, as you have in a secure word, you have this fluency in terms of switching from a one a screen to another. And then we can hear, so from the cargo declaration was here, I went to the transport document or consignment, and then I can from the container open actually also the container information okay and when you look to the container information so it has so that you we can have a view of the container and if you look um, uh, if we look here to the container we can see the information of this container how it is coming to the country uh the container type etc we have the seals here that was submitted uh by the carrier okay for example we have this information ceiling party okay i know also that in uh, in uh, um, i noticed that in uh as you could have word current version this ceiling party is not mandatory so we made it not mandatory in asia for sri lanka but i think in, in the future you can submit I, and, and I believe this information is available on the transport document, so you can submit the seal number and who did the sealing party. This list of sealing party and the codes for sealing party, as you have in general, is using standard uh, reference data, okay, and everything is defined into the documentation that will be uh, shared with you. I can show you that. Uh, I can show you this this document. OK, so this is an Excel file, right? And this Excel file ex, uh, describe clearly the structure of the XML messages, the same XML messages that you do, but you can find here what are the additional elements, etc. how the data should be filled in. So as you have actually, um, as you have, is based on standards okay in order to uh to um fulfill you know uh the reference data and if you look here you can see um this mention on the on a guideline this column guideline which is uh, explaining which appendix we are using because we included into this excel file all the appendix all the reference data so, for example, uh, what, uh, you know, what are the mode of transport? What are the country codes? Uh, of course, it's already available. You already have uh, most of them, but uh, some cases may, maybe you have a new, uh, okay, like uh, uh, the container type. We are using the standard container type from, I think, ISO, uh, if I'm not wrong, 3361. I need to be sure, but it's like that. ISO, we have also the package codes. This is the ceiling party. That's why I opened uh, this uh, because it's a new field. So for the moment, it's not mandatory, but in the future, you will uh, progressively put the ceiling party. So this is the code that is being used by, uh, by ASEHA. So car for carrier, SHI for shipper, fighter sanitary, veterinary, customs, or others. Okay when you submit the information about um, about seals uh, regarding containers. Here we are talking about the uh, the package codes. So in ASEAB, we are using the UNICC Fact Trade Facilitation Recommendation number 21, okay, for package type codes. For UN low code, we uh, this is the UNDG, dangerous codes for the UN low code. Um, we took now the latest uh, UN low code uh, list from um, for location codes like LK, CMB, uh, 
uh, SJ, same for Singapore. All these uh, UN locos, we took the latest version that was released by um, the UNIC in December uh, 23. Okay, so this in regards to the um, in regards to the changes uh, that may come in the future. I repeat again, your current XML file will be actually accepted by the system as it is. You can submit it from 1st April. You can submit it to Asikuda World and to Aziham should work uh, in both uh, in both system. Okay, the same until we um, progress with. Um, with Asia. Okay, so I have here in my, uh, let's say, uh, explained about ceiling party, and here we have this, when we look to the container, we can see all the consignment items that are uh, stuffed into this container. Okay, so we have here five consignment items, the same that I was showing you, but it could be also that in the same container, you have different consignments. So it might be that one container can, can you can see here when you look to the good stuffing, you can see that two consignments in the same, two or three or four consignments into the same, um, into the same actually uh, uh, container. Okay. Right. So this is a briefly um, the new structure of, of, uh, of uh, cargo declaration. Uh, consignment and uh, container. I will actually show you this part now, XML uh, cargo integration. So for that, uh, this is the interface. If you go here, so here you can see the results of your uploads and everything. OK, and down here you can have this XML file uploads. It is the interface for uploading XML files into uh, ASIA. OK, ASIA allows also uh, using the same XML file can be uploaded using the user interface or it can be also sent to the system uh, using API or system to system, OK, using web services. Both can be used in order to um, in order to submit information to uh, ASIA. OK, and we have created for those who wants to use to connect to the system uh, to Asia system to system. We have created a documentation an API guide that can help you uh, do that uh, if you want to implement a, a, a system to system integration with um, Asia. OK, so I am here. OK, and as you can see, you have here statuses integrated, failed, etc., which is absolutely normal because there is a check on this, uh, on this, um, on those. Uh, uh, there are checks that are uh, done on those uh, files and you may get an error and from the error you can fix and you can submit again. OK, so. For the submission and for sending a new file into into Aziham, I have here created like uh, an XML file. OK, I have an, an example of XML file that I will uh, submit to to Aziham in order to um, create a new cargo declarations with consignments and container and so on. OK, so I'm starting with a simple, simple um, cargo declaration, not to, to make it too complicated for our demo so you can understand easily. And I have here uh, one cargo you recognize certainly if you are used for the XML that is sent to uh, Asikuda Word, you recognize uh, the same structure as I told you with few um, few adjustments, improvements, etc., in order to comply with the new, uh, with uh, this new structure, improved structure, and so on, uh, etc. But it is based on the existing structure in order to facilitate your transition, transition from Asikuda Word to um, as you have for submission of your information. OK, so this is a file here I called Ashka and you cargo declaration. So this file XML, let me show you what happened if there are mistakes into this system. So one of the mistakes, for example, is to have a wrong. Let's come here and we have a wrong, for example, location code. Let's put SGXXX. OK, right. 
So this UN low code does not exist, so the system will check and provide. And for the upload of the files, um, you can upload different actually XML files. You can upload a manifest, the one that I will do right now. You can upload a bill of lading into ASEAN Hub as a single bill of lading. Even before the creation of the cargo declaration, you can submit a, a bill of lading. Okay. Then you can have uh, you can submit also an XML for the cancellation if you want to cancel. I will explain you about cancellation later and about uh, here the consolidation. OK, so as a carrier, I have access to the four. OK, as a freight forwarder, you will see when I will connect with the freight forwarder, I will not be able, for example, to upload a manifest. OK, uh, etc. Right. So let me do the manifest. OK. So I click here and then I have this selection, uh, this uh, pop up uh, dialogue here. Just I click anywhere inside this uh, inside this box here that was, you know, highlighted when I moved on with the mouse. I click one time and it gets me to the to my um, uh, hard drive to my uh, system. So let me go to the right place as you have. LK and then I created under this demo uh, web um, demo um, uh, uh, folder. I have this Ashkan cargo declaration. Okay, and then I just send this one. So the first time that you send the information into Asia, if everything is okay, if if uh, if the first valid there is a first validation that happens. If the XML is well structured and they are not first validation, the system will accept your file, okay, and will give it the status submitted in, uh, in like this, okay. And now it's being processed by the system. So there are two ways of this submission: whether it gets integrated, that's fine. It means that my cargo declaration is fine, or it gets failed. OK, so if I reload here, I get this failed. So in order to know what happens, why it has failed, I have to click here on the failed button and then uh, I will get the exact message error message explain me why it has failed. So in our case, the message saying that entry no found on catalog catalog location and the code is SJXXX. OK, so and it gives you also the uh, the you know the path. So it's a departure port code. OK, so as as much as as possible, the system is giving information so you will be able to fix your um, XML. OK, so in my case here, I I understand that this one, OK, it can be it can be uh, something that is not as 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 obvious as this, but the system will give me, you know, indication where I have to. Where I have to uh, submit, there is another there is also other checks, like, for example, to check if I'm allowed to uh, to submit a cargo declaration. So, for example, if I want to submit, remember that I am working for this Ashkan new um, Ashkan new uh, company. So let's let's say I, I want to submit uh, this uh, for Maersk. OK, so if we look, uh, remember that in my so I, I've changed that into Maersk. OK, so if I'm trying to submit information uh, for Maersk, then can you mute yourself, please? Thank you. So if I do it for Musk, what I got, I got authorized action. OK, you got these meshes authorized action because we I'm not allowed my I'm working for the company test company Ashka and you I'm not working for Musk, so I am not allowed to submit information for Musk or for any other carrier. Uh, for any other carrier, so each carrier, each user submit the information of his company. OK, so let's move on now with uh, with uh, let's put now a correct XML file. Let's have this now. Everything is fine and let's uh, uh, submit again this manifest. OK, so 
when when you are trying again, you need to empty this uh, for uh, fi uh, this that box and then select uh, this again. So once you do that, so the system you see the system is processing this one, and as soon as it is processed, okay, you will uh, you it will be changed to uh, the status to integrated, okay. And then you have this button here appearing, so you can from here directly click and it will open um, the cargo declaration, okay, that I have submitted using the XML file. And you can see that I have this cargo declaration here. Originator is my company. It was created by me. Um, this is the, the, as you said, I got immediately a reference number, movement reference number unique one and it gets this uh, actually uh, consignment okay there is one consignment i told you that i'm using a uh, simple um, simple uh, um, let's say uh, a simple example here with one consignment if i click here i can see that this consignment has one consignment item and we have here one container okay one container which is having this master BL here. Right, so uh, let me go back to the, uh, so here I, I, again, I submitted this information, you see, from here it was integrated. So one of the things that, one of the changes, so here I'm acting as, uh, as a Hatem carrier, at a carrier, which I now am working as I, 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 again, I told you I'm working for Ashken U, okay, carrier Ashken U. So one of the things that ASIHAB also provides is that uh, the system can allow uh, vessel sharing, okay? So vessel sharing means that in ASIHAB, how is the concept is working in ASIHAB? means that we can be two or three carriers sharing the same vessel and each one of us in ASIHAB submits his own cargo declaration, okay? For the same voyage number, for the same date of departure from last port of call, for the same uh, vessel, etc. okay? And so, and the system handled to have two cargo declaration with different carrier codes for the same vessel. This is how we manage um, vessel sharing, okay? So to do that, I'm going to see here, I, I have submitted this cargo declaration, but I can also now, uh, I can also uh, let me sign out from here, okay? Let me go back to the login of the test server. And in this case, I'm going now to log in with another carrier. Let's say I have created here Hatem.musk is another carrier. I'm let's suppose that I'm working for Musk this time. And as working for Musk, if I enter to the system here, if cargo declaration, of course, I have different views. I can see only in my cargo declarations, not the one from Ashkainu or from other companies. So I can see only my uh, uh, cargo uh, declarations, okay, and at the same time, only my consignments again, only the, the master consignments and only containers and so on. So if I go to the um, XML file uploads, all right, then I would like actually uh, to me to submit as most to submit my cargo declaration as I'm sharing this vessel, Hansa Breitenberg, with Ashkenu, with this Ashken company, with Hatem Shipping LTD company, we are sharing the same. So I'm going also to submit my uh, manifest, uh, my cargo declaration data. Okay. So if you look here, I have also this. Uh, I have here um, the this the the another cargo declaration. So in here, Ashkain cargo declaration, uh, I have, it is, uh, voyage number is 493K. It was departed on 22 uh, February 2024, supposed to arrive on 20 March 2024. 
And for the mask, I'm going to use exactly the same. OK, voyage, information, vessel. We are talking about the same vessel, Hansa Breitenberg. Also here is Hansa Breitenberg. And down uh, while this this carrier was submitting information on his about his master consignments and everything uh, here as Musk, I have my own consignments, different consignments, different containers and so on. OK, so let me um, here come here and upload the manifest as Merck. Remember that the system is always controlling that if I Musk, OK, I cannot submit for others. Same if you are working for uh, say MRCGM, you cannot submit for, for Merck, uh, MSC, etc. OK, so here the code is. In this case, the code, uh, the this is the, the carrier code for Musk. So I can as 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 a user connected to link it with MERS, I can actually submit this one, right? So let me submit and the system will be, uh, you know, processing this, right? So as you can see here, by the way, when you submit information into into uh, into ASIHAB, you receive uh, actually currently here, you receive also, uh, let's say, emails about how notification about your submission of information into uh, into uh, Asia. OK. Uh, now it should be OK, so it was processed. So here. This one I click here and now it I have a new actually uh, cargo declaration that was created with different uh, movement reference number. It was created for with the carrier code. Musk. So here we have uh, the carrier code Musk. I'm the user Hatem.Musk, not Hatem.Carrier. Okay, the other one. And it has two consignments. In this case, I click on these consignments. I can see the containers and so on. So it has two consignments, right? But of course, if I go to the to my if I go to my um, if I go to cargo declarations here, I can see here that I have submitted, you know, this 493K, the same vessel, same everything, but it is, uh, it is, I can see only mine, right? So for that, if I connect now to the, let me connect now to the system as, 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 as customs or ad administrator, okay? As administrator or as customs, I can see both, uh, I can see, both. So if I connect as admin here, let me connect. So as customs, customs have actually access to more information, of course. If I go to cargo declarations, then I can see this. I can see both the two. OK, so this is the Musk cargo declaration, and this is the Ashkaen cargo declaration. Both of them are coming the same uh, voyage number, same departure date, and same transport means, OK? But as customs, I can see both. But of course, each carrier can see only his, uh, can see only his cargo declaration, his consignments, and so on, right? So this is for vessel sharing between uh, the two, OK? Right. So uh, let me now, if you see, if I'm, I'm customs, I can click, I can see this. And uh, if I click on, on the other one, I can see two different, uh, two different, uh, two different uh, uh, consignments. OK, different consignments, which for each, each carrier. Good, so let's hear, let me sign out. So I showed you then how to submit the information as a carrier, OK? Using the XML file. And uh, and I want to show you now and uh, using two carriers. The two carriers were, 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 were actually sharing the same vessel. Both of them have submitted cargo declaration. They can each one of them see only his information, his data, but customs can see both, OK? so. 
Let me go back to the, uh, let's go back where, let's go back to, to Musk, for example. And I want to show you that apart from submission of information using uh, XML, the systems allows a submission of information all also using uh, UI, user interface, of course, and or Excel file. So let me show you, um, uh, for example, let me show you how we can submit information also using the uh, uh, using the UI. So for example, for example, I can come here. I'm this is my cargo declaration. Remember, I submitted using this XML file here. The XML file I used it is this one. Remember, this is the one as as Musk. Okay, I submit the information. So I would like to, and we were discussing about amendment and so on. So I want to amend, of course, this cargo declaration at the same time. So let's do several things at the same time. I want to amend this cargo declaration. Of course, I can amend my XML. I can add more BLs, submit them, submit them, submit them, or I can change information in my XML and upload again. It will be updated. But here, in my case, I'm going to use the user interface in order to submit a new BL, to add new BL to this cargo declaration. Okay, and remember, amendments can be done until the arrival of the goods. Okay. Um, uh, I will explain that later more in detail what 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 exactly okay so here let's say I am want to create a new consignment so there are two ways to create a new consignment you can come here we have here the list of consignments you can click on new consignment and then you start filling in all the information okay tag all the information here and when you submit if the everything is correct, the voice number, everything, it will be linked to the cargo declaration. Another facilitation that we introduced is that from the cargo declaration itself, so if I'm here in the cargo declaration itself, in my cargo declaration, which I created before, I have this button in you here, okay? And I want to create this consignment from the cargo declaration screen. So if I click new here, what's happened? is that in order to avoid any mistake or something or whatever, if you create from the cargo declarations, all the information that can be reused is automatically pre-filled in into the um, into your screen, okay? So the last port of call is uh, currently have been already uh, filled in, destination point, voyage number, everything, the transport means, etc. So I have to put here, let's say, uh, you know, let's say the um, the transport document reference okay i can put a transport type let's say bill of lading uh, issue date issue place transport document let's say import etc okay so i put here it was uh, let's say this one uh, singapore let's say it started uh, it was loaded in 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 shanghai okay and receipt place can be also shanghai Okay, and delivery place is Colombo, uh, is, is Colombo. Okay, you can also click here uh, to search. Uh, we, we have here um, easy to search things, so you can search for all uh, that contains the word LK that starts with LK if you are looking for a specific UN low code. Okay, so let's put here LKCMB, right? And then uh, these are not mandatory information huh? at the end. What is mandatory here is to put the consignee name. So let me put some uh, consignee, I don't know, test, okay? Then what we have, remember, we have these consignment items, this new uh, concept of consignment items. These are description of goods again. So let me put here uh, goods weight, Let's put here 500 uh, packages, package type. Let's say we have uh, banks. Uh, Asha's code is not mandatory. I can put here some, uh, let's put something like raw materials, uh, shipping mines, let's say no marks, no marks, etc. And then we have the stuffing, okay? The stuffing, so no dangerous goods. Um, so the stuffing here, I need to provide like, um, 
a container number, let's say MSQ uh, 886432, uh, uh, for example, yeah, I'm putting uh, what type of this, uh, what is the type of this uh, container, and here the staff information. So uh, let me put 100 CBM, then the gross weight. So in, in our case, I can create actually two containers here, or I create one, and then I will put all the goods inside all these uh, items goods inside this container so here we have uh, 500 let's 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 put here for example 600 let me make a mistake here and put 600 so after filling in the information if i submit this new bl here it will actually give me this message as i told you before so total stuff at back 600 does not consign item packs 500 okay so here because I declare that the, the, the consignment item was 500, but I was putting in my stuffed packages 600. So I, whether I correct the 500 or I connect, I'll correct the 600. Let me correct this and then submit again. So when I submit, it's, it's going now processed and it will bring me back to the cargo declaration. Okay, bring me back to the cargo declaration. And here is my new, remember, I had two consignments before, but now I had three consignments because I have created a new one. OK. As easy as that, I just uh, from uh, the UI. OK, so from the UI, we have created this one. I told you that also from here we can create directly consignments. There are also possibilities, for example, this one that I have created. I can export it into JSON into my hard drive here locally. I export it to JSON, so I created just a file here into my download folder. And then if I go to new consignment completely, I can import that JSON. It, it was here in the downloads, this one. I can import and automatically also, it will be this time filled with all the information that I had in my, that I had in that one that I had just created. Remember, consignee test, 500 packages here. It will get, and then I need to update for, of course, I need to change it, okay? Because if I, I submit here, it's not gonna work, is is uh, so I have, so here I submitted, you know, this consignment. OK, so um, exporting it from JSON and so on. Right. So let's go to the let's go to the uh, let's go to the uh, here. I showed you from the user interface. Now let me show you how it works also with Excel. OK, so here. We have also for that, let me connect to the other user sign out here. And let me connect to Hatem Carrier back again. So in Hatem Carrier, I have here other consignments. So uh, now I'm connected with another user. Okay, the Hatem Carrier with with the company Ashkenu. Okay, so we have here uh, now uh, this those consignments. OK, I want to show you now the Excel uh, upload as another way to submit information into Asia. And for that one, let me show you this uh, template here that we are using for submission of information as Excel file. OK, so. Excel file, we need to use this template. So first it shows here. Uh, the main or general information about cargo declaration. So we have three tabs here. OK, three tabs. We have the cargo declaration. We have here the tab of consignments and or, or bill of lading and the tab of containers. OK, so for the cargo declaration we have here, we can let me put here a, a different voyage number. So Ashkan 002, it is departing on 27, uh, 20, no, this is the arrival, departing on, uh, let me put another date, let's say uh, it is departing on 23, 24, and arriving on 27, 03, 24, okay? From uh, Salala in Oman to Colombo, this is my code, carrier code, and this is the uh, information about 
the transport um, means, uh, etc., the tonnage and so on. And here we have the list of consignments in the next tab. So the list of consignments, we made like this list of consignments. So we have here, I have here like three, uh, three um, uh, BLs, okay? And we have here the container. So for each BL, we have here one container, okay? One here, we have the same container for those two BLs. And, and so on. So we have the seals, we have the type of container and so on. In our consignment, we have all the information, uh, loading and loading of the consignment. We have here the exporter or shipper, the notify party, the consignee, uh, et cetera, information about packaging, the gross mass, shipping marks, goods description, etc. So we we are using this Excel file actually to simplify for small um, small companies, uh, etc. But it's always better to use uh, XML, and I guess in uh, XML has a better validation and so on. This still uh, this it works this Excel file, but sometimes if uh, the user might you know change if he change. Um, this template or is changing, you know, with copy paste and so on, it might give some errors, but it's okay. So we improved a lot this uh, Excel integration in Cambodia and the system gives usually um, which cell exactly is providing the error and so on in case something is happening. But I have this Excel file here. Let me save this Excel file. Okay. And then um, let us try to submit this Excel file here from from uh, here from the interface. So as the same as XML, this is the the this is the uh, the part for uploading XML files while here is for uploading Excel files. And for the Excel files the same. I can use there is a template for the manifest for, for the cargo declaration. There is a, 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 one uh, template for the bill of lading and one template for the degroupage, okay, for the consolidation. Let's use that, uh, that Excel file. It was under documents, I think, if I'm not wrong, it was uh, here. Let me check where did I uh, save that file, properties. Yes, it is under Excel here, uh, and I can use this file. Okay, sometimes a Mac, if I just change it, the file uh, does not allow me to upload it automatically. So here, right, and then I'm uploading now this file with uh, this file here. This file here, it has a voice number ashkan 002 so if everything is okay same as same as uh, exactly the same for xml if there is an error you will get the failed here here in our case it's okay so when i click here i can see all the information that i i was putting in this xml file excel file sorry so we have the ashkan 002 i changed the departure date to be 20 uh, March arrival estimated time of arrival on 27 March and I have these three uh, those three um, consignments which are defined here okay this is my three consignments are here okay are here and I have actually currently I think uh, two containers so if we click here on this one you can see that I have this container was created with all the information, okay? But if I go back to this uh, to this one, uh, this is um, another consignment here. It is in this container, and this container actually has two uh, consignments. This is an example where we have two consignments inside the same container, okay? And of course, this information is only accessible only to me. Uh, right here, it's only accessible to me, uh, not to any any other carrier and so on. Right, so I think we are fine with carriers and so on, sharing different type of this applicable, of course, for, for all uh, the Excel, the UI, the XML is applicable to all stakeholders, not only to carriers. And now I'm going to um, 
let's let's move on with the freight forwarders now. OK, so we have here a consignment, one of the consignments here. I think this one I'm going to this one uh, and I'm going to deconsolidate this one. OK, this uh, um, knitted fabric. OK, uh, it has uh, garment accessories, raw materials and accessories and, and so on. So this is a, a master a consignment that I want to uh, deconsolidate. OK, so for that, let me close all those windows here. OK, and connect as a freight forwarder. Sign out. Let me go to a freight forwarder. So I have already created, I think, uh, this freight forwarder here into the test server. Yes. And then uh, using this freight forwarder, I'm coming here into this, uh, this uh, XML files, and I have here one XML file this time for um, deconsolidation. Okay, so for deconsolidation is a different uh, XML structure or what we call XSD. And here on the top, we have the information about the master BL, and I'm going to deconsolidate into uh, let's say two, uh, two BLs, okay? Two um, sub consignments, right? So let me right. just now go to the uh, again. So if I'm connected as a freight forwarder, I cannot see cargo declarations. I can only see oh, this. As, as you can see, I can see only oh, this. Uh, excuse me. Can you mute yourself, please? Thank you. So I can. OK, thank you, Nalin. So uh, all right, let's let's um, let me. OK, here we have um, I have here as a freight forwarder. I have here. I don't see. Remember with uh, with um, a carrier, I can see cargo declaration, new, etc. But uh, with freight forwarder, I cannot see uh, that options. I have the option of uh, consignments, etc., and the option of uh, containers. So for the option of consignment, I can again see only my consignments. Okay. So here, this my profile. So this is the code of my freight forward, SLC-FF. This is a kind of, let's say, a example, a code that I'm using for the demonstration today. OK, uh, so SLC-FF is my uh, freight forwarder code. OK, and if I go to fast cargo integration, you can see here that I don't have the option manifest. I have only the option single bill of lading, cancellation, and degroupage. And I'm going to use the degroupage for this moment. For the XML file, also the same thing. For the Excel file, sorry, the same. Uh, bill of lading and degroupage, OK? So XML file uploading. XML file uploading, I'm going to uh, a deconsolidation or degroupage. It's, it's the same uh, concept. Here I go to my... Um, demo folder and I'm going to check to check this uh, this one Ashkan deconsolidation this is the one that I'm using here okay with uh, with I'm deconsolidating that master BL from the voyage 493 okay right and then open and let's see how it works anyway if if uh, I'll show you the example where the master is not there. And uh, in, in, in Sri Lanka, we adopted the version top down approach so that it must be the master must exist in the system in order to deconsolidate. OK, so in our case, it's OK, it's integrated. Everything is OK. So let's look here to the consignment. I have this 9.3. Yeah, I use this 4.9.3 now. Is this is the parent that I told you on this? Uh, there are two. I've created two. Um, okay, for this uh, voyage number. So of course here I cannot see the the master 
consignment. Huh? I it exists in the system, but I cannot see it. Okay, so if if I go to the container, I can see I submitted now two two uh, consignments. Okay, so by the way, every time you submit a consignment here. The default or the first status is BL issued. It means that this consignment has a transport document. But because screen. So Sorry? screen is not visible. Screen is not visible actually. The screen is not visible to everyone? Yes, yes. Since when? Uh, just from the submitting the XML file to the system. Huh? Not visible. OK. Let me uh, let me stop sharing. Yeah, now it's OK. Thank you. Yeah. OK. okay thanks. You? OK, so it was where where where, where was it uh, not visible? Where was uh, the last from the submission? From the submission. If you could if you could start from the freight forwarding module again, it would be really helpful. Okay, so so for the freight forwarder, you didn't see me submitting the XML file, right? Yes. For the carrier, it was fine. Yes. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much for, yeah, bringing that. Uh, so, okay, let me uh, show you what I did. So. Here I'm connected as a freight forwarder. Let me sign out, start over again. This is the freight forwarder, Hatton.forward. Okay. So for this freight forwarder here, I connected. So my profile. So this freight forwarder has this code SLC FF. Okay. Right. So this freight forwarder now, my idea was to deconsolidate using this xml file the xml file is here right using this xml file this is the xml file i'm deconsolidating this master bl for the voyage 493 okay so for this voyage for this master bl that was submitted by this carrier code the one that i submitted today from ashka and you okay I'm going to deconsolidate it into two, two consignments, two sub consignments, okay, as a freight forward, right? So to do so, I went to fast cargo integration and I uploaded this file, okay? This file, I uploaded it and it was integrated. And thanks to that, I have now created two. Uh, consignments they are here one with dash two and the other one with dash one for this uh, for this master consignment or parent doc reference okay remember this from singapore to colombo on this transport hansa breitenberg so i have deconsolidated okay the same uh, the the master into two the first one has raw materials and accessories okay and the second one which is uh, this one has knitted fabric etc and garment okay right but as a freight forwarder as you can see as a freight forwarder i don't have access to the cargo declaration and i don't have access to the details of the master okay i have the reference of the master I submitted using the reference of the master BL like this one and all the voyage and automatically it was linked to the system, link it with the master. OK, so by doing so, let me uh, I will show you that how both uh, freight forwarder and carrier have different views. OK, so. Can you mute? Uh, yeah. So here, let me uh, new. Let me open new incognito window. This allows me to connect to the system with, uh, with actually um, two different users. So in this one, I'm going to use the, the carrier. Okay, I'm going to connect as the carrier. 
Okay, so I have like in parallel two sessions. Okay, one you one with the carrier and the other one with the freight forwarder. So if you look here, if you look here to the to the carrier, right? The carrier has this cargo declaration, consignments, container, and so on. While here, if I I'm like the freight forwarder, I only have consignments and containers. OK. So. If I go now to uh, consignments, remember I have as, as a freight forwarder, I deconsolidated this this user here, this uh, document here. OK. This is the document that I deconsolidated into two sub -consign consignments. So this is the one here that was submitted by the carrier. And since I have done that as a freight forwarder, you will see that it was actually changed. The status of this document has been changed from deconsolidated, from BL issued to deconsolidated. Okay. So as a carrier, I can see that it was deconsolidated. So when you look to any, any BL or you can see here, the previous states, when you look on the top, uh, top corner here, left corner, you can see the status. It was BL issued. So this is the by default, any any consignment that is uh, issued, uh, create into the system or submit in the system. It has a transport document for one consignment. There is one transport document. So there is one BL. So the first stage is BL issued. We carrier or freight forwarder issued the BL. After that, it can be deconsolidated or it can be declared. OK, it can be housed and declared. So in our case here, this consignment has been deconsolidated. OK, by this freight forward. This freight forwarder has created two consignments here where this is the parent. OK, those two consignments are BL issued, while when we look to the master consignment, which is here, we see that it is deconsolidated. Of course, as shipping lines, as a um, carrier, I cannot see the, the those which have been deconsolidated. I have no access. So for example, if I look to the container, I can see only mine. Same thing for the uh, same thing for the freight forward. So if the freight forwarder goes here, and check the container to see what are the consignment inside. I can see only my only mine also as a freight forward. The dash one dash two, while the other one is without dash. So this is the master. So these are two different views, as you can see in my screen. This is the carrier view, and this is the freight forwarder view. Okay. Of course, if I connect, uh, let me disconnect here and connect as customs. The customs they will have different views. Customs will see here the three. OK, they will see the three. They will see that we have we have linked to this container. We have a master consignment here, which was deconsolidated. And we have here the two. House or sub consignment of this one that were deconsolidated by a, a freight forward. OK, so different views. It's not the same. OK, everyone see only the information, see only the consignments that belongs to him. OK. Only customs can see uh, everything. So if we sign out, let me sign out from here and connect again as carrier, right? I'm connecting here as carrier. OK, let me connect here as Hatem carrier again, right? And so we are here. Assignments, we have our cargo declaration here. Let's go back to the cargo declaration. It is this one here, five nine three, uh, four nine three. It has one related. I click and I cannot see any 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 related consignment because they do not belong to me. I can see only my information. Okay. So Let's uh, let's try something else. 
uh, I have I, I told you so here how freight forwarders and media information, how uh, etc. Just just to show you one thing before I move on to um, uh, another. Uh, if I submit, if I am asked, yes. If I submit as uh, even as a freight for if, if as a freight forwarder, if I submit for example, can you mute please? Okay, if I submit for example a, a deconsolidation of, for example, I'm taking this example. Let's 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 put here like test. Okay, so here I'm going to submit another file but for a master BL that do not exist, OK? In this case, what happened? I save here. I go that I go to uh, XML upload. I can I select this one, OK? And let it uh, be uh, processed by the system. OK, so I got failed. Why? Because actually the consignment 490 test with the voyage number does not exist, not found. Parent transport document reference does not exist, actually. So if you submit a degroupage, because we have this top-down approach, if you submit uh, a deconsolidation and the, 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 the consignment does not exist, you will get a failed, and you need to submit once the master BL is in, in the system. So here if we go to um, if we go now to the carrier again so i i made a deconsolidation so let's assume for example i was telling you that we can amend we can add a new bl uh, amend the bl itself change the bl through xml through ui wherever we can actually as a as a as a carrier i can imagine that currently this uh, this uh, consignment actually will never it was not loaded at the departure okay it was submit but it was not loaded at the departure and therefore i i, I want to cancel this in asia it's possible to cancel this okay so i'm going to cancel this uh, consignment okay i'm the carrier remember here i'm the carrier i'm going to cancel this consignment so so by canceling this consignment, so remember that this consignment was deconsolidated. So here I have here deconsolidated the previous status, and now the status is uh, the status is uh, cancelled. Okay, right. So what happened to the what happened then to the to the to the other one? So I'm here as a freight forwarder. Yeah, I'm back to my consignments. So in this case. Because we have the carrier has actually cancelled the master BL. What happens to these uh, sub consignments? They got actually the, the status orphan. OK. Because there is no parent anymore. The parent was cancelled. OK, and they are market orphans in order to take action whether they need to cancel these or etc so but me as a freight forwarder i can see that they are often i can click on one of them and then i have the option because it's often i have the option to check why it is often and if if the system if there is no reason that it is often the often will be will be actually uh, in some cases if you click on check often and um, the the orphan state is not is was needs to be cleared. It will be cleared automatically by the system. So if I click on check orphan, then what happens is that the system will tell me. So the system cannot clear the orphan status, but it says that master consignment with the following key was cancelled. Okay, so here the freight forwarder needs to take action because it was it was cancelled okay you can actually um you know investigate it was cancelled the goods will never arrive something like that and so on okay good so this is one scenario 
Okay, so we cannot uh, we cannot uh, here do anything for the orphan status. Okay, and they will remain orphan until we find a solution. We can actually also cancel them if it is confirmed that the, the goods will never arrive and so on and so forth. Now, here I am as a freight forward, right? Let's go back to the let's go back to the uh, to the carrier. Okay, so this is the consignment that was cancelled. But OK, let's assume that in reality things happen. This is another scenario. Whether we are OK here, then it's another scenario saying, OK, I cancel it, me as a carrier, or even if uh, we are talking about uh, uh, um, uh, several intermediate, imagine that one intermediate has cancelled a consignment by mistake. OK, so I cancelled this consignment by mistake. No worries, there is a possibility to undo this. Uh, cancellation. OK, so I can confirm that I can click and do as a carrier. I can click and confirm this cancellation. So if I do undo cancellation, OK, so let's wait for this uh, undone. As you can see now, it was cancelled and it's back to deconsolidated. OK, right? So this uh, consignment now is again deconsolidated. Like, Nothing happened. I made a mistake. I fixed my mistake. But if we go now to here, and then if I reload, as you can see, the orphan says now disappeared. Okay. Because I, from, and I, if I click, I cannot see anymore. I don't see anymore this orphan uh, in red here about why. Because the master first was cancelled, they got orphan, and then was there was an undo cancellation and it was fixed. So it may happen uh, somebody was cancelling by mistake and uh, quickly after undo the cancellation, then it's fine. There is no uh, no problem with that. OK, so this is, uh, as you can see, we did the cancellation and we did the undo cancellation and so on and uh, so forth, right? So let me check. Uh, uh, yes, so this is the ways of amending, etc. So for consignments which are uh, going, so let's assume we have here, we have uh, a consignment that let's say that this uh, consignment here, the the, knee, the needed fabric, etc. This is like the house consignment and it's going to be we are going to create a customs declaration okay right so in asia hub any consignments can be deconsolidated or can be actually a house consignment and can be um uh, declared okay but it, it it is whether this or that so if it if a consignment got deconsolidated it cannot be anymore used as a house and declared if it is um, not deconsolidated, it can be house anytime. So any 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 consignment can be house. Okay, so as as long as it was not deconsolidated. So in our case here, I'm going to use this one, this consignment, which has the status BL issued, not deconsolidated, and it is not orphan. Everything is okay. I can use it to create a customs declaration for for that. There are two possibilities. When the customs broker, and this we will show you later, uh, this is you will see later in the next webinar where we will do. When the, uh, the, 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 the clearing agent, when he prepared the customs declaration, when he puts the reference of this consignment, the voyage and everything, the reference number, into the customs declaration, where uh, Asikuda Word will retrieve automatically this consignment from Aziha and we'll mark it as what we call house consignment. So it means that this consignment is now considered as house and it was declared. OK, so this is the automatic procedure from uh, by automatic link from Asikuda word to uh, to Aziha, retrieving the BL uh, from Aziha. Another way is if you know that this is a house consignment, you can mark it as a house consignment. OK, you can use this operation from the system manually. You can mark it as a house. You can come here and, and, and set it to house. 
Okay, set this one to uh, to house. By clicking here, it will be set to house. What happened then? If that is that the consignment will be marked as house here, and it is sent to Asikud Award now. Okay, it is sent to Asikud Award, so it is available already for any uh, customs declaration to be uh, to be actually uh, used. Um, this BL can be after that used in box 40 and in the reference of the manifest and so on. It can be used uh, as um, referenced by a customs declaration. OK, right. So. After that, excuse as, me, as Hatem. This, yes, Hatem, this is Krishanta. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we have about 30 minutes left in the scheduled time, uh, yes. Hatem, and we also need to have some uh, questions. So uh, just yeah. uh, uh, informing you that yeah. uh, we can maybe stretch a little bit uh, more, just informing yeah. of the timeline. Thanks. Yes, yes. OK, so I will go faster with uh, with now. Uh, 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 I will go fast now to, to finish this um, uh, presentation demonstration so that we can go to the uh, we can move to the QA uh, session. OK, so this one now is marked as house. OK, it was marked as 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 house and any update into this. So if you take and you use the edit button here, you can amend. As I told you, it's possible to amend whether through XML or from the UI. For example, you can change the description, you can change the consignee, whatever. OK, any change here that you may uh, put here, OK, into into the system, it will be automatically sent to Asikuda Word. OK. Until before the arrive, until the arrive. So until the arrival, so here I did not explain to you about on purpose. Now it's having time come. This in transit here is the transport status. So as you can see here, I have my two, my two consignments here are in transit, means they did not yet arrived. One is house and the other one not yet. I, you can see here others which are already arrived. So until the arrival of the goods, all changes that you will do in ASIHAB will be automatically sent to ASICUD Award, especially for house, particularly for house uh, consignment. Of course, the deconsolidated are not need to send to ASICUD Award. We, uh, we only keep them in ASIHAB, but all house, all those which um, in uh, you know will any update until the arrival will be sent automatically no problem to asikuda word and it will be integrated the change will be integrated there into asikuda word after the arrival you can change the information into asihab you can submit your updates into asihab but it will not be sent to asikuda word okay there after the uh, the arrival, it is to offer customs to accept your changes that in are in ASIHAB to be applied into ASICUDA Word, etc. And there are, of course, um, Mr. Tilaka uh, will can explain you more about uh, after arrival. There are uh, penalties uh, in order for the amendment of the and they are actually handled by customs. So you can 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 you can you uh, can you mute yourself, please? Thank you. So here, before the arrival, I repeat, all the modifications in Asihab are accepting Asihab and then sent automatically to Asikuda Word if the if the if the consignment is house. After the arrival, they will not be sent. They will kept only in Asihab. You can still update because we need you need you to report exactly what is happening to the consignment even after the arrival but it will not be applied to customs only it will not be applied into asikuda word only customs will handle that by accepting the changes and applying them into asikuda word or rejecting them or whatever that's customs uh, actually will decide about those changes okay so i think uh, we have here anyway um, if, for example, 
we have here this consignment was set to house, but actually by mistake, it was not somebody set to house a master BL that needs to be deconsolidated. No problem. Again, there is the possibility to undo, okay, but not by here as a, as a freight forwarder, I cannot do it and do set house. I need to connect as, a, we need to connect as customs. Customs can undo the set house and then the BL is back to BL issued and it can be deconsolidated. Why only customs can do that? Because actually there might be a pre lodged customs declaration in, in, uh, in Asikuda world that needs to be managed, okay? So before we undo the set house, so you are able to um, deconsolidate, there is, um, uh, um, through customs, you need to properly uh, update the customs declaration or cancel the pre lodged customs declaration. And after that, um, after that, the undo set house can, can be done by customs in Asia Hub and the, and, and the, the BL. Um, can be after that deconsolidated in uh, in Asia. Okay, so last but not least, I would like to connect as a, I would like to I would like to connect as a admin and as customs, and then uh, actually I would like to um, uh, let me do the arrival. Uh, let's do the arrival. Um, operation, okay, on cargo declaration. So here, I'm taking this cargo declaration here, my time, cargo declaration. Let's take this one here, this one that we did with, um, no, this one from Merce. Let's see, let me get the other one from Ashken. It, it doesn't matter, anyone, but this one was deconsolidated, etc. So remember this one. Now I'm connected as, as, as customs. Huh? And I can see that this consignment was deconsolidated into two consignments. I can see that one of them was house, etc. So from here, I can now as customs or port authority, whatever I'm doing it as, as customs here, I can come to this um, cargo declaration and I can set arrival for this customs declaration. I can do the Two, two ways to do the arrival, whether system to system sending arrival notification about the vessel, then all cargo declarations will be marked as arrival with, this, with the, the actual date and time. If not, if we are using it from the UI that I'm doing it here, I need to do it for each cargo declaration of the same vessel. So here I'm submitting the arrival. The system is asking for actual date and arrival is, 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 is required, of course. So I can come here, I can put this one here and I can submit the arrival, okay? I can submit the arrival. So uh, the declaration has been submitted successfully. So now you see that the cargo declaration got the status arrived. It's not anymore in transit. The related consignment, the first one got arrived. If I click, also uh, also uh, those uh, consign related consignment got the arrival. Container got grab. Everything linked to this cargo declaration was getting the uh, status arrived. So from arrived, you can still change in Asia Hub, but the change will not be applied into uh, Asikuda World only after customs um, uh, customs will handle that. They will accept or reject those changes. I think um, uh, I went you I went uh, with you in uh, most of the feature of the system. Um, it takes uh, more time then because um, we had. Uh, a lot of features in in the ASEAN system, a lot of cases, etc. And we, I would like, I wanted to take this opportunity to uh, give you the maximum of, of information. So, um, Mr. Uh, uh, Christianda, thank you very much uh, for your um, uh, 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 thank you uh, for your attention. Uh, the floor is yours, Mr. Christianda, for um, Q and A uh, questions. Session. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Hatem, for that very comprehensive uh, uh, demonstration of all the features. 
Uh, I'm sure there were uh, some questions about the uh, guides, uh, user guides and so on. Um, the, uh, so I'm sure we can make uh, all of these uh, available to all the participants. Um, uh, so at this point, I am inviting uh, Mr. Nishan Jawadana from uh, SLAFA, uh, who is uh, actually uh, spearheading the Q&A session. Uh, uh, Nishan, over to you. Thank you, Prashanta. Uh, thank you, Hatem, for that uh, detailed uh, explanation on the features of the ASIHAB and also for Dietma and Tilaka for the brief on the ASIHAB and, and of course, Krishanta for the opening remarks. Due to want of time, I mean, we have a few questions that I would like to first pose to the panel uh, prior to opening it up with, uh, to uh, the Krishanta back again for CASA, a few questions on Ka from CASA and also to uh, all the participants. Uh, so I will try to reduce the number of questions due to want of time. Uh, my first question is actually in relation to uh, a technical aspect, which I think uh, I would like to pose to either you, Hatim, or Mr. Tilaka. Uh, this is in regard to uh, the submission of beers. Uh, you see, there was the a communique by customs uh, referring to a submission of a beer and a BL submission prior to departure. I think we all know that a BL uh, cannot be issued technically cannot be issued until departure or shipped on board. So the, there'll be a practical issue there. However, Dietma in his uh, opening remarks mentioned, uh, spoke about the manifest and the BL and also uh, Mr. Tilaka's uh, presentation. Can we have some clarity on that? Uh, what is exactly meant by the BL or are you all referring to the manifest uh, per se? Uh, can Mr. Tilaka or uh, even Hatim, can you take it, uh, please answer? I think uh, it, uh, yes, yes, Tilaka. Uh, yeah, Nishan. Uh, yes, Tilaka. Uh, okay. Uh, it is uh, actually the now now with this uh, submission we are talking about the we have <coughs> basically we have two data sets like two XML messages, right? So this is what we are trying to uh, uh, get from uh, <laughs> trader uh, shipping lines and trade. <laughs> During this uh, project, I mean, uh, whatever same we are talking about the same XML message. So let's say uh, you can start with uh, submitting the submitting the what you have uh, initially. Any modification can be uh, uh, can be done until the vessel arrives. So so you don't need to worry about the changes. So uh, let's uh, you you can start with what you have initially. Uh, this, uh, I'm talking about the same XML message what you are submitting to the system uh, customs. So you can keep <coughs> on submitting at the at the initial stage. Uh, so then uh, we are we are allowing you to do the modification uh, until the ships arrive. So this is what we are expecting from you. I think Hutton can add uh, uh, give some comments on it. Okay. Yes, uh, maybe also I, uh, I I may ask uh, my colleague Ditmar, maybe he can also provide uh, more insights uh, about this one. Uh, yes, so um, uh, the BL can be uh, can be uh, the, the consignment actually is um, we have the consignment and one consignment has one transport is linked to one transport document so we can create uh, the the consignment um, based on the transport document before uh, the departure and it can be amended as uh, mr tilaka said until the arrival of the of the as i showed uh, and demonstrated into uh, into the uh, into the system so practically yes uh, maybe the transport document is not issued until but um, as from our experience and from our collaboration with our partners all the information is there and we can create the consignment uh, in advance uh, and of course all the tools are available you can cancel amend uh, uh, etc in and in, in in case uh, there is uh, an issue or, or or something like that uh, thank you hatem uh, mr tilaka or hatem uh, the, my second question is uh, you see at present we have the tier system of reporting in short uh, until the main line uh, 
uh, submits manifest information the second tier and the third uh, <clears throat> cannot uh, upload similarly this goes on it cascades down to all the tiers now in this in the new version uh, will you have will you still maintain the tier system if so uh, there may be an issue because if some, by if by some chance we have a 24 hour window now if by some before departure that is if by some chance if someone delays uh, then the tiers beyond that may not be able to submit uh, 24 hours before departure any comments on that please uh, thank you, Ishan, uh, for the question. Actually, uh, uh, everybody knows uh, this. Uh, we are we are uh, we are practicing the top-down approach for the submission. I mean, uh, so I think most of you can understand. Uh, in 2014, uh, during our implementation of, uh, I mean, we implemented 2012 uh, to the manifesting. But I mean, the, we we practice. Uh, uh, independent submissions uh, for, for some period, but uh, it failed because of uh, you know connecting the master BL numbers and uh, with the with the submission is not uh, properly done. So uh, finally ended up with some hanging uh, submission. So we know we need to avoid these things. I think uh, because of that we are going to. Uh, 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 going to proceed with the existing submission strategy, top-down approach. So <clears> I think uh, uh, by doing that, uh, we will be able to eliminate a lot of issues. But uh, with the with the latest uh, framework, uh, with the I mean, the, uh, the system is easily uh, easily accessible. So and the uh, technology is uh, is uh, very I mean user friendly. So therefore. We expect uh, 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 you will you will not face a lot of issues by by uh, I mean for the submission. I think uh, Ditma can uh, uh, give some comments on uh, this question. Or to Ditma. Okay. Well, thanks, uh, Tilaka. Thanks, uh, Nishan. Um, Yes, this this is the approach that Sri Lanka goes uh, to have the tier system uh, and uh, uh, one after the other. At the same time, um, we have been working with Sri Lanka um, to work towards exactly this time frame that the second tier, the third tier, the fourth tier has to wait for the the, the previous tier uh, to do their work. Um, now. We are introducing this system not in order to to improve or to uh, strengthen the, the penalty regime. Uh, we actually want to do exactly the opposite. We want to encourage the industry uh, to provide information as early as possible, uh, but not later than 24 hours prior to departure. Um, and in, in so doing, um, we, we want everybody to provide their data as early as possible. Um, but not to introduce uh, 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 penalties to, to that extent. Yes, there is a penalty regime, of course, but um, we will uh, certainly not work towards uh, uh, penalizing the second or the third tier if the previous tier has not completed their duty. Uh, uh, that would be unfair. So clearly the onus is on, on the, 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 the shipping, uh, the, the carrier to, to do the first tier. And then uh, for 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 the others to follow for to, to follow suit, um, but we at the same time we expect that uh, among you you industry um, that you maintain a good and close communication uh, to encourage each other to 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 submit. Um, I think we 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 need to start piloting the system and see how how people are adjusting to the timeframes uh, and submitting their data. Um, and based on that, uh, we will certainly make uh, make some some debriefing on the pilot and see how we can move this into into a live environment um, after the the pilot period. Um, so I, I wouldn't be too concerned uh, in, initially uh, during the pilot f uh, phase um, uh, whether whether you know the third or the fourth or the fifth tier, whatever how many tiers you you want to maintain. Um, will be able to to fulfill their, their their duties. Thank you, Dietma, for your explanation. So we we see some challenges. So let's see how the pilot project uh, 
uh, gets on and then we will uh, perhaps review it uh, a little later. Uh, then I have just uh, okay one more question. Uh, this is of course with regard to the pre-clearance aspect of things, which is actually in our next uh, webinar. But since it was indicated, I would like to ask uh, perhaps uh, Mr. Tilaka again. Uh, so there was a notation uh, that uh, the Gazette notification 188655 uh, of 31st October 2014 will be uh, actually amended to cater to the electronic sea cargo reporting uh, system, the new one. Uh, on the same length, uh, can we also look at uh, the the customs uh, section 27 of the Customs Act of 1962 was to be amended so that we can also have a pre-clearance proper. That is, for example, having paid, I think we discussed this at our workshops also, uh, where, where we can have uh, the duty paid and maybe perhaps uh, exchange rates adjusted at the time of goods landing. Uh, is that something that uh, is being looked into, uh, Mr. Tilaka? Nishan, can you elaborate a little bit about what it, what it, what it, uh, it's not? Yeah. Section? Uh, we discussed uh, some time ago uh, or in the run up to this uh, program, uh, Mr. Tilaka, that the pre clearance, that is the payment of duty, for example, also to be allowed prior to uh, yeah. arrival. And if at all to uh, adjust the exchange rate either way, by way of additional payment after landing or yeah. clearance on the day or the draw or a drawback, <laughs> something like that. Uh, is that a mechanism that uh, we can look at in the future for in order to speed up the clearance further? Uh, uh, the, 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 what we have done with the, our SOP is like uh, we will, uh, uh, once the CASTEC is submitted, uh, the cost taxes will be calculated uh, for the uh, for the uh, for the submission date, uh, pre launch date, because there is an action called pre launch before cost will be uh, before registration. Cost can be pre launch when the cargo is not arrived. So then the taxes will be and exchange will be taken for the tax calculation uh, based on the submission date, but. Uh, <laughs> Once the cargo arrived, the taxes and exchange rate will be taken for the registration date because the registration will occur once the cargo is arrived. So for that day, taxes will be calculated. That is how it goes. So the payment is done after the vessel arrives, no, not before that. This is how we uh, plan. And anyway, the documentary check, uh, the documentary examination parties uh, can be done before ships uh, cargo arrives. This is what we are trying to do with uh, pre-arrival. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, yes, thanks. Yes. I think that yeah, it's very clear as to where we stand with regard to the pre-clearance. But there are a whole host of uh, questions on the chat group, and I think most of them were uh, actually responded to by Sham, but I will uh, now uh, actually uh, give uh, Krishanta uh, the proceedings because he has also a few questions uh, from uh, uh, the, the CASA viewpoint. Uh, Krishanta, over to you, Krishanta. Thank you, Nishan. Uh, so we'll uh, point these out and then maybe we'll come back to you uh, just to uh, get the unanswered uh, questions covered. Thanks, uh, Nishan. Um, yeah, so the first question uh, that I have is on a uh, few technical and few uh, procedural as well. Uh, so the first question is up to which point uh, the timeline will the manifest amendments be uh, allowed? Uh, I think it was mentioned, but maybe a quick question, a quick answer from uh, Mr. Tilak onto that. <laughs> up to which point uh, yeah, will the amendments uh, be allowed? Yeah, amendments yeah. are allowed until the vessels arrive. It's very clear, right? <clears throat> yes, it's clear. Thank you. Uh, so th there was an answer to the second question as well. Will the proposed process uh, allow additions, deletion of manifest? Additions, I think uh, Hatem demonstrated as well. Uh, will it be allowed to uh, uh, to delete consignments as well, uh, Hatem? Any consignments yeah, to be deleted yes, during transit? They can be cancelled, OK? So to make the difference between a deletion, which is uh, completely out uh, of the... If, if delete 
a real delete that there is no record anymore in the database? No, but uh, there can be cancellation. So cancellation, there are two ways of canceling um, a consignment, whether by the carrier himself or the, you know, who's the submitter of the information. Uh, anyone who submitted a consignment can cancel it and or it can be invalidated by customs. So customs can what we called invalidate. Invalidate and cancellation um, leads to the same thing, except that uh, cast, um, uh, cancellation is done by the submitter and we get the status cancelled, while invalidate is done by customs and we get the uh, status invalidated. So to make the difference between uh, consignment that were cancelled by the uh, shipping ship uh, the shipping uh, stakeholder or by customs. Thank you, uh, Ate. Uh, Krishanta, there is another question which is uh, which has been repeated. I believe a lot of the participants want to know if the guidelines will be available in soft or hard copy and if right. it can be provided to them. Yeah, Hatim, okay. maybe. Yes, I uh, I will check with uh, with Isham. The, the 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 guideline that I actually showed to you today will be available. We will be made available uh, today in the course of the day. Um, and we will uh, see with you how we, you know, spread that all over all your uh, members and, and so on. Yeah. OK, great. Well, it's already there. So it's it's, uh, already, it's already can be shared. Right, sorry. One more question. There was a question posed with regard to the format of the custodic. Uh, so I believe uh, there was a response that uh, all custodics will continue on Asikuda world. Uh, does that mean that the Asikuda world will also link, will have a, a link to the uh, Asiha? Yes, as I explained in the demonstration, so the manifest information will be in Asiha, except for the BLs that are marked as house to be actually declared, that will be declared. So there will be two possibilities to pull house consignment from Azihab to send them to Azikuda world. Whether the clearing agent, when creating the customs declaration by putting the reference of the, the BL, automatically there is a communication between Azikuda world and Azihab and the BLs are, the BL is retrieved, is pulled and is sent to Azikuda world and we can find it as a, a way bill in Azikuda world. Or a user can um, se um, set the BL to house in Aziham. It will be also automatically sent to Asikuda World and it will be available for the clearing agent or broker or declarant uh, to use on a to pre lodge a customs declaration using that uh, BL. Okay. Uh, Nishan, uh, may I? Uh continue with a few more from Kaza. Uh, Hatem, the question I think you can answer, are uh, you showed some of the data elements that could be amended, uh, but yeah. this particular question refers to, uh, are there any uh, specific data elements that may not be allowed to be amendment? For example, uh, the consignee name, because there can be due to uh, changes in the contract of carriage halfway through, the consignee yeah. name also might need to be changed. Is that allowed? Yes, everything is allowed to change except the uh, voyage information for the moment is not allowed to, to is not allowed to change. OK, but all other data is allowed to change. Consignee name, including description, no, uh, no problem. OK, I think the answer to the next question was also uh, provided. Uh, you said that uh, amendments could be either performed via data entry by logging into the portal uh, or via uh, XML. Um, yes. uh, do you want to confirm that, uh, Hatem? 
Yes, absolutely. So I confirm if you actually submit the same XML with changes about same cargo declaration or same consignment, automatically it will be uh, the system will update the existing or create any new consignment if it is in the new XML. This is one uh, one way. The other way is to connect uh, through the system, through the user interface to the portal and to update directly there using the edit operation, which is available or can create a new consignment as I demonstrated today uh, in my presentation. Great, thank you. And then the next one is uh, in case uh, if a vessel omits Colombo after uh, after we report the manifest, uh, will there will there be a possibility to change the the vessel um, of the consignment, uh, which you already did. Yeah, vessel, vessel code and the vessel name. Yeah, subsequently. Yes, actually, the, absolutely. So the vessel information, the vessel name, uh, IMO, registration number, all these can be actually updated uh, into a cargo declaration and, and, and consignment and so on. Through, again, through XML or through the UI. Uh, is there a limitation in the number of characters in the BL description in RC Hub? Next question. There is a limitation of 4,000 character for the description and 4,000 for the shipping marks. These are the two, let's say, biggest um, uh, biggest yes. uh, fields that we have in uh, in RC Hub. Yeah. Great. Uh, thank you. And uh, the next question is at present, uh, uh, we obtain a vessel reference, vessel reference number two to three hours prior to an ETA. Uh, will this be required in the proposed RC Hub process? Okay, so for the moment, this will not be a requirement. I think I will let to maybe Tilaka to uh, give, provide more information. So for the moment, at least at the beginning, there will be no need to have this uh, we uh, this uh, this vessel registration number before the um, the uh, at this time of the submission of cargo declaration, etc. We'll see later at what time this may be just before the arrival uh, or at the arrival uh, to provide that. But um, not we don't want to block the you know the submission of cargo declaration and consignment. Um, before, so this will, will can be done uh, any time in a parallel and can be added later. So maybe Ilaka can provide uh, more, but I think this is the way um, we are heading to. Okay, uh, Mr. Tilak, you have any comments at this point? No, I think that's that's not clear. I Great. think uh, okay. I don't see. OK, and uh, I think Hatem, uh, you were explaining about uh, customs having to make a decision on any uh, post arrival uh, uh, amendments uh, if it is required and there might be some fees. Uh, this next question is uh, if there are such fees uh, that are to be made post arrival of a vessel, uh, can these fees be made electronically? OK, we Penalties. don't have for the moment. Yes, we don't have for the moment. Uh, if if you are referring to any e-payment solution or or yes. or to yes, or, right. or the fees to be calculated automatically. Uh, no, it's a e-payment that is being referred e to. E-payment. So no, that's actually not uh, the scope of Azihab for the moment. Uh, but I don't know uh, if there is a uh, already a solution i think for this one tilaka can provide more uh, more information but in our project in asiam there was there was not uh, any any scope of e payment uh, of those fees uh, for the moment okay tilaka uh, maybe you can provide more information yeah krishanda i think uh, with with the implementation of asiam uh, we will be able to reduce a lot of uh, you know Penalties basically because uh, all the modification is uh, expected to be done before ships arrives. Whatever the changes, I, like like uh, I discussed the matter with Mr. Sudat uh, regarding this uh, this penalties, and uh, we are working on it. Uh, definitely, we will be able to give a better solution like e-payment solution can be provided. 
we are working on it i think uh, apart from that uh, he's an idea to uh, you know uh, introduce a, a kind of standard fees for uh, for, for the uh, whatever the changes so after okay. arrival so we we need to discuss that uh, with them right okay thank you, thank you mr tilak yeah and the next question is to uh, get some tips uh, from the learnings from uh, Cambodia because uh, this uh, this gentleman feels that uh, you know until things streamline uh, amongst the agency network uh, there might be uh, certain challenges that everybody will face uh, to get the details 24 hours prior to departure uh, especially for feeder vessels from uh, short haul uh, short sea routes so uh, just speaking some uh, experience and uh, how these challenges will come uh, in the Cambodia case. Any insights, uh, Satem? And maybe Dietmar? Yeah, I will. I, I think I will let Dietmar maybe for this kind of uh, question. Um, could, could you please repeat? Uh, I was distracted, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, did my the question is uh, just to see if there are some uh, insights or tips, uh, learning tips from the Cambodia example, uh, Cambodia pilot uh, testing okay. because uh, until things streamline, getting information 24 hours prior to departure from a loading port, you know things might be challenging, short sea routes, uh, feeder vessels, and so on and so forth. So some some tips as to how these were effectively handled uh, in uh, Cambodia. OK, so for, for, certainly from a Cambodia perspective, um, there may be the one or the other lesson. But in, in general, I have to say Cambodia had went uh, a, a completely different route because they had not uh, have uh, electronic manifest submission before. Um, I mean, Sri Lanka has um, many years of uh, experience of submitting that information prior to arrival, even though it comes at an earlier point. I, I agree with that. Um, but Sri uh, Cambodia had nothing uh, in, in that regard. So they started from scratch. Um, and as such, uh, they, they all had to, to, to learn how to submit information electronically. And I think the biggest problems we were facing in Cambodia was that of data quality. Um, I, I, I think even up until today, uh, we are faced with uh, many, many <clears throat> instances where the freight forwarder um, uh, is, is giving uh, uh, incorrect information. Uh, um, and th that's something that uh, uh, we, we are still uh, facing there. Um, so far, I have not uh, uh, seen significant challenges, although we are still in a, in a pilot phase and uh, we have not monitored exactly <clears throat> uh, the submission timelines. Uh, so whether um, uh, the, the, the freight forwarder has submitted their share uh, 24 hours prior to departure from the foreign port. Uh, I think that that monitoring, that review, um, uh, needs to take place at some later stage, maybe after the pilot. Um, so currently, I would expect that uh, uh, many submissions are still uh, at, uh, at a later point in time, maybe shortly before arrival. Um, but we, we have a, a pilot phase where we you know, um, in, insist on a non-enforcement policy, a grace period. Um, uh, in order to get everybody on board and let them uh, uh, learn and, and, and change their processes internally. You, I mean, your, your community will also have to make changes to your internal uh, structures and communications with your overseas partners. Um, that will take some time because your overseas partners will also have to, uh, to adjust, um, even, even though um, this 24-hour rule is in place in so many countries around the world. Um, that uh, I, I don't expect that there will be a significant challenge uh, uh, waiting for you. But of course, uh, so far, um, your partners overseas uh, operate on the existing timelines that exist. Um, so we will have to give it a few a few more weeks uh, uh, to, to, to adjust. I think that that's the only lesson we can we can give from Cambodia. Um, let the that, let the pilot work its way. 
uh, let everybody, you know, get used to the new environment um, and enjoy the additional features that the system will bring uh, about. Um, uh, don't don't worry too much now during the pilot phase uh, on, on on penalties, uh, uh, as uh, we 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 want to have that pilot uh, um, operated under a grace period. You know, so nobody will be shot, nobody yeah. will uh, will be will be penalized. Uh, because we want to encourage people to participate and to do the right thing and to provide accurate and good data and also to get used to the amendment process, something that, of course, your community is is uh, certainly uh, kind of uh, um, concerned that every change so far in the, in the current system will lead to a fee, to a penalty that is being paid. And your point about e-payment is, is a critical one. You know, uh, we want to discourage cash payments, you know, straight to the officer, you know, and we want to discourage that officers make it a business model. Uh, you know, there has to be a, a professional uh, a realization that this is, you know, a, a business that that has to take place. The amendments have to take place. So everybody also has to get used to the new environment that we allow am amendments up until arrival. And. Uh, that these amendments are absolutely fine and acceptable, uh, and you know certainly uh, like to hear that you know going forward uh, for amendments after arrival, uh, that maybe Schlager Customs uh, turns into a fee structure rather than into a penalty structure. Fees sounds much much more professional than you know uh, uh, issuing a penalty because you didn't do anything wrong. You just want to make changes to to information and provide customs with the most accurate information. Um, so it, it is rather a fee than 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 a penalty, and to allow you uh, to provide those fees uh, by electronic means. Um, so again, uh, to your question, uh, the Cambodia case clearly showed that uh, we will have to give you some time to adjust to the new ti new timelines. Um, and I think the the timelines that Shlaka was was sharing uh, um, provide for that. Uh, I think uh, it. Um, We'll, we'll have the, the whole month of April uh, to test and trial and pilot and uh, get used to the new system. Thank you so much, uh, Dietmar, for that comprehensive response. Uh, Hate, maybe you can answer the next question. Uh, will there be a risk of uh, uh, consignment data getting duplicated uh, if we submit a second XML as part of an amendment? Let's say you, you submit the first XML 24 hours prior and then with a few more uh, BLs or with a change, a second XML gets submitted. Uh, is there yes. a risk of uh, a BL number getting duplicated? No, no. If we respect actually, if we respect uh, the, the 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 key, the key is uh, uh, the carrier code for each consignment, the carrier code, the voyage number, the uh, port of departure and uh, um, departure date okay so the departure date should be like the scheduled departure date okay when we submit the cargo declaration it should be the the scheduled departure date and it will serve as a key to the uh, to the um, to the cargo declaration even though the actual departure date can be actually later different it's not a problem. There are there are three there are three data elements in the cargo declaration. We have the date of departure, which is actually the key, the scheduled date of departure, which is the key for the cargo declaration. Then we have the without time, without anything. Then we have the estimated uh, ETA, the estimated uh, time of um, uh, the estimated time of departure, ETD, estimated time of departure, and the actual time of departure. So it might be those changes in, in the future, but we need to keep the same key so all partners can use this same key to connect to the cargo declaration, and also to create uh, other uh, to create the consignment, sub consignments, etc. So. There will be actually if this for this key, there will be no duplication because the system is controlling if there is a duplicated and also from the database, there is already a constraint. So uh, uh, if it is submitted, if XML, it is submitted. 
actually it is submitted and then submit again. If the system finds the information, it will be updated. If not, uh, it will be created. Now, why did we define the constraints on the level of the database? Because we can submit information at the same time. OK, so it might be that a big XML file is being processed. OK, and another one is being processed in parallel. The system cannot check, uh, but we did the constraints on the level of the database. So if there is a, a risk of conflict uh, constraint, that constraint might give, uh, uh, you know, if two, th two at the same time are creating at the same time the same consignment, which uh, can happen in some cases, uh, they will be stopped. So there is no risk of duplication because we put the controls are at each level. Thank you, Hatem. Uh, and then, uh one before the last this question uh, refers to type of shipments where a one container can contain uh, two bls uh, which we call yes. part bls uh, will that be allowed is there a restriction yes. to have such consignments where the same no. container will appear in two bls of course not so the, the 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 container i was showing this i think and i was also highlighting this very well the container might contain oh different BLs if you look to the container because now we have a view of the container itself when you click to the container as 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 uh, customs can see all the consignments which are linked to the container we can have two three four consignments wherever if they are if one consignment is taken one part and the other one is taken another part there is no absolutely no issue with that great thanks then uh, the final point is the Hatem and maybe Mr Tilak can deal with also uh, now in 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 Sri Lanka, about eighty percent of the uh, volumes are a trash shipment, and uh, since we refer to uh, pre-processing uh, of mainly import cargo, and even Deepmas uh, mentioning about uh, visibility of the cargo uh, going to the hinterlands, uh, is there a requirement to start the trash shipment testing during this first phase or? Uh, can we allow the uh, local imports to be done during the first phase and then uh, take the uh, trash shipment uh, uh, at a second phase? That was the question. Prashanta, uh, thank you. Uh, it is uh, even uh, some of the uh, some of uh, agents like shipping lines, they submit uh, trash shipment even now to the Asikuda <coughs> system. So I think uh, uh, it, this is a requirement uh, for Sri Lanka customs, right? Because uh, we want to get the transshipment data as well. So I uh, technically there is no issue from our side. So submitting uh, import or, or transshipment uh, uh, manifest data. So I think <laughs> if you are ready, you can you can submit all this information to us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there is no barrier from our side. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tila. Uh, Nishan, I think it's uh, yeah. the, the list there, of There's questions. one question, uh, Kushanta. I would like to <clears throat> some of the questions. There are a whole lot of questions. Yes. But one question pertains to uh, the information submission after the vessel departs by some chance. What happens if you submit it after? What would be the process? And but that will be treated as a manifest, right? Uh, the amendment, right? No, not the uh, amendment. Uh, maybe uh, Mr. Tilaka can uh, give some insights. Yeah. Let's say uh, a local forwarder submits the manifest uh, after departure or soon after, <coughs> instead of the 24 hour rule. Then what would be the process? Uh, right now, we don't, I mean, there is no hard and fast. Uh, rule because uh, there is no regulation uh, not not published yet, yet. but uh, during this piloting uh, we will uh, we, we can monitor uh, the how you are submitting and uh, you know how the how we are processing it but i think uh, uh, anyway uh, the, during this grace <laughs> period there is no penalty no, no, no charge uh, but uh, once the regulation is uh, published, uh, 
uh, uh, there will be some you know you have to adhere to that that regulation anyway uh, let's see how it goes because there is no hard and fast rule at the moment so but uh, we are expecting uh, your submission should be done uh, uh, 24 hours before uh, ship depart that is the there is our uh, you know uh, i mean planned planned uh, uh, planned uh, requirements right thank you thank you so we will actually have to see how it goes during the test stages and then take it from there i suppose uh, right uh, any other questions uh, you just one us? that uh, one that i saw uh, wasn't which wasn't answered uh, uh, nishan i'm not sure whether it was answered later that is whether the seal number is mandatory uh, i didn't see an answer oh. to that in the chat seal number yeah import consignment the seal number at the moment uh, it is optional it says but it's mandatory uh tilaka is 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 this information is uh, mandatory or we it's up to customs to decide and uh, i think uh, krishanta i think uh, all all uh, i mean all F, all containers like when it comes to Uh, FCL, uh, FCL uh, shipments, uh, BLs. Uh, there will be an uh, seal number, right? So yes, but not yes, the, not yes. not for FCLs. So uh, whatever the uh, FCL uh, container records, uh, I think uh, this uh, this uh, information is required. So it is optional at the moment, but I I think. Uh, uh, based on our requirements uh, it can be a mandatory field uh, in future okay maybe that's something that we might need to discuss on the go yeah. mr tilaka because the, there is no specific uh, data element or a field also if i am not mistaken i think the marks and numbers the seals are put at the moment so maybe that's something that we can work out <coughs> in the next run there is also a common question on the 24 hour for short hauls so i think the customs uh, notification on date 20th march is very clear on that maybe you can just elaborate a little bit on that uh, mr delaka because some questions are posed as to what happens for the shorter hauls so we are reverting back to the 72 hour rule for that right uh, yeah like uh, nishan i think uh, what you are asking is about the the shipments come from uh, like india uh, that's right oh uh, yeah so within uh, so in that case uh, uh, even uh, I, is there any problem of submitting the data uh, 24 hours before depart from the for the for the shipment come from india i am assuming that there is especially when it comes to duty it's a few hours yeah so i i'm i just assuming hours. that there will be difficulties Okay, just two hours. It takes two hours, but I mean, uh, but ship, yeah, shipments. Uh, is there any problem of uh, submitting the data? Just, just I mean, twenty four hours uh, before departing. Is there any issue? Uh, right. I mean, we will have to not... perhaps open it out. Mr. One, Mr. Mohammad Arshad has asked his question. Yeah. If if Mohammad is online, maybe you can unmute and uh, explain, uh, Mohammad. is mr mohammed uh, arshad in no uh, so we'll have to perhaps uh, keep that question in mind uh, mr tilaka and then uh, inquire from the audience uh, later on kushanta i think uh, nishanta i think uh, i think there will be issues right during the piloting yes. we will be able to understand all these issues Absolutely. and uh, accordingly we can take this i mean there is no issue i mean this is a learning uh, learning session i'm learning uh, phase so i mean we are flexible but i mean on this purpose is to go with the regulation i mean maybe <laughs> we need to uh, introduce some regulation so whatever it will depend on the you know uh, for the i mean based on the uh, traders uh, requirement as well as the custom requirement uh we can compromise i mean yeah, yeah because i think uh, mr tilaka until from today onwards until the 30th, 30th of april the parallel run will take place with all anybody who wants to enter yeah. right 
So it is yes. only from first May that the pilot project starts. So there is about a one 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 month five weeks for us to uh, yeah. go through the motions and then see what how this turns out. Okay. Right. I suppose for want of time, Kushanta, do we have some more time or it's almost? It's nearly I think there's yeah. one question. Um, to attend. Whether yes, NBOCC and freight forwarders uh, uh, require to, uh, if, if it's the same company has NBOCC and freight forwarder option, I mean, uh, if they have to register as two different uh, users or not, Hatem, if you can answer that, please. So if the company is uh, is uh, doing uh, freight forward <laughs> and NBOCC at the same time, right, Isha? Yeah, that's right, yes. Yes, they can actually use uh, the carrier code that they are assigned into uh, into uh, a secular word, and they can perform uh, uh, freight forward and NVC has uh, uh, same uh, same type of operation and so on. So the users can simply connect as freight forward, and they can uh, do uh, both uh, without problem. At the moment, uh, does he have uh, two accounts or is it one? If he wants to act uh, uh, for uh, as two different users, two different profiles, he can do that. It's not a problem. They can create as much uh, user profiles as it needs for their work. <laughs> it's not. Uh, it's not a problem. So if the same person is working for. Uh, Fred for water and working for an MVUCC, he can create two different user profiles for himself. Same first name, last name, email, everything. He can use the email for each company that's allowed, and he can act for both companies. Um, if if they have two codes, one for this company, one for that company, Thanks. he can create as many user profiles as as it need. There is no restriction in ASEAN. All right. Yeah, I think uh, with this mission, we yes, we have covered most of the questions. I'm sorry, we we had I don't think we have time to cover all the questions. Some of them were similar or repeated. Uh, so we'll uh, close it for now. And I'm sure when we have our next workshop, we and uh, after the trial, uh, we can uh, perhaps uh, have more issues that we need to or we will clarify more questions that need need to be done. So I suppose we can call it yeah. a day for now. I, I would encourage you to make maximum use of the WhatsApp group um, uh, yeah. to follow up on any outstanding issues. Um, that WhatsApp group, that's a lesson learned that we have from Cambodia, if I may, um, that uh, we, we set up a similar uh, arrangement. Um, this communication channel has been used extensively and has helped everybody to very quickly come on board uh, with many, many technical issues. So I encourage everybody, and I saw already hundreds and hundreds of registrations for the WhatsApp group. That's excellent. Very good. Use that channel uh, to follow up on any out outstanding questions right now. Don't wait for the next webinar, which certainly is go going to come but use the channel right now for immediate uh, feedback. And I think everybody is watching the, the messages and gives feedback and responses um, uh, uh, as soon as possible. Thank you. And uh, again, Nishan, on behalf of uh, Kaza and Slafa, we once again thank the presenters and panelists and uh, for the wonderful uh, presentation and uh, clarifications made. Thank you as well, Nishan. Thanks a lot, Kishanta, and thanks for all the participants. Uh, so we will we hope that uh, the ASI Hub or the DGMS project will be of a success. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Good luck, lot. everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. If you got one of the court maker, I can make a man the costume.